Welcome to HeroQuest fans. Just getting started here. Welcome Glasgow Gargoyle. Just check my sounds. How you how you doing on the Hey. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, much better, thank you. <laughs> I'm getting over Great here. stuff. Yeah. One thing I want to talk about real quick um, before we get started with our new game here. Uh, Hasbro Pulse. They did their uh, stream. I think it's just, just finishing up, like, as we speak. Did you see it at all, yes. uh, Glasgow? I watched, I, I watched the Star Wars segment because I'm a Star Wars collector. Ah. Yeah, I, I um. But did I didn't. You... I didn't. I would. I, I didn't think the. I didn't think they were the Avalon Hill were having a section today. Well, they weren't. But I was told that they did do a little segment right after the Wizards of the Coast thing, and they basically just oh, announced that the really? uh, yeah the Dreadvale dice that people were spending three hundred fifty dollars or more on eBay buying because they thought it was a Gen Con exclusive, even though they said it wasn't a Gen Con exclusive, that they're going to be selling mm -hmm. them now. And I guess... Oh, yikes. It's just going to be a... Well, I want to find the exact clip, if I can. I'm looking for it right now. But um, I guess Avalon Bill was saying, according to what people were reporting, that when you order something, you can just get it. Um... But I guess it was going to be a Hasbro Pulse exclusive at first, and then like an hour later, everybody else can get it. So not much of an exclusive, really. Yeah, I, I think that that sounds a bit like uh, people who've got premium membership on Hasbro Pulse get to order or get to pre-order one hour before regular. Yeah. People. See, I didn't think you had to pay anything for Hasbro Pulse. I mean, I have an account on their website that I use to pledge for the. HeroQuest has lab campaign. Does that mean I'm a, mem a member? <laughs> I mean, I already have the dice, but no, I think. Um, I mean, I, th I think what that means. I, I think what they mean is, uh, if you're a premium, a Hasbro Pulse premium member, that means like it costs you like uh, forty pounds a year, or like, maybe oh. fifty dollars a year, um, okay. and it means that all your deliveries are free. Oh, okay. You know, post and packaging is you know, what do you call it? Shipping, you guys say, yeah, shipping yeah. is free. Yeah. So if you order a lot of stuff from Hasbro Pulse, it's worthwhile oh, being a, a premium member. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, I've got the exact clip. I'm just going to throw it on the screen here as part of our broadcast. Yeah, I wasn't going to do like a simulcast or watch party or anything. It's just we knew that it was not going to be a big deal. But I know that people were going nuts over the dice, and rightly so. But, yeah, just absolutely ridiculous, the scalping going on. Oh, yeah, crazy stuff, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was I was actually a little bit of a victim myself because oh, I paid over the odds for the, uh, what was it, the Guardian Knight. Yes, I, I yep. paid over the odds for Guardian Knight because I just couldn't get it. But you're, but you're wiser now. I'm wiser now, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, my I, mind points have increased. <laughs> I I will tell you, I am not above that whole thing, that whole fear of missing out. I will tell you. So I'm a big fan, or I, I was a big fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000. I've always had a soft spot for like bad midnight movies and like laughing at them. And uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of that show, um, but it has kind of a cult following here. But they got see the, the title again. Mystery Science Theater 3000. It's like no, that one's passed me by. I'm afraid. Uh, well, maybe it's more of an American thing, but yeah, there's like little silhouettes of guys in a theater, and they're just making wisecracks during like a movie about like aliens or you know uh, spies or something, and okay. they just, they just have like really really cheap joke skits and things that go on. It it's it went it started in the uh, the late 80s. It went until like the late 90s and then it got like some crowdfunding and it came back a couple times like in recent years. And it's not as funny, I think, because they self-censor so much with the jokes, like because of political correctness. Yeah. But still, the old yeah, episodes Yeah, woke has gone mad. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just like okay, you can't yeah. can't have fun anymore. Comedy, comedy's just not funny anymore. Yeah. No, no, it's yeah. it's tough. I mean, they weren't they weren't over the top, but yeah, you can tell it's like they're like, uh, what do we what do we say now? I can't say anything. But anyway, yeah, Mr. Science Theater. Um, there was a Mr. Science Theater movie. So originally, it was just everything was on VHS tape, and people would just like copy the tapes and circulate them. And the people that made the show like didn't care that much. I mean, even though. I guess it was against copyright and everything, but they were just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So people would well, trade, I mean, trade the What tape. is it? All you had to do, all you had to do was put, put like a bit of tape on the, mm -hmm. on a little corner of the, <laughs> of the VHS cassette. And, and that was it. it. And you could record anything. Oh yeah. Yeah. People would dub tapes. Well, and people would record it off TV. Like there was no official release and they'd just like here. So we yeah. had friends would be like, yeah, here's some Mr. Science Theater episodes, you know, watch them if you like them, copy it pay it forward to somebody else but then eventually the stuff came yeah. out on dvd and the dvds were like because it wasn't uh, a big super big company or anything so they would just like the dvd would be out for a very limited time and then suddenly the dvd which was you know basically a couple of guys in their basement like make cracking jokes in front of like a really low budget flop from the 60s and that dvd would be like hundreds of dollars because it was so, such a limited run. So it's just kind of a weird kind of thing. And I guess the original studios that made those those cheap movies did get compensated. So it's kind of funny that it's like they made yeah. more money when people were mocking them than when they were trying to be serious. But anyway, one of these DVDs... Well, I suppose, it, I suppose it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's good old-fashioned supply and demand, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, but it's just funny how something that like you think would just be like belongs in the trash like ends up becoming like this collector's item of like great value. Yeah, just because people decided it was. But anyway, yeah, one of these DVDs, it was Mr. Science Theater the movie. It was out of print for a long time, and I think it was it was probably originally like fifteen dollars when it came out. And it was eighty dollars like on eBay. And I had just like been watching it and watching it and watching it because I I find stuff online that it's like, oh, that's too expensive. Like, I'll wait and see if there's a better deal, you know. And I think it was $60, 60 bucks. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get it. I'm a big fan. Um, you know, it's out of print. I want to have it for my collection. You know, even though I have, you know, a digital rip that I found online, it's like I want to buy the DVD and, you know, have it. So I bid yeah. on it, won it. Got it. Yep. And I want to say like a week later, they re-released it <laughs> for like $15 again. And I was like, no, um, <laughs> you nice. idiot. Why didn't you wait? Uh, that's, that's yeah. what do you call it? What do you call it? Murphy's Law. law. <laughs> yeah, but, but I had no one but myself to blame because I decided that it was worth that amount and I paid that amount. And it, it's not like I'm going to get a refund. It's like my own dumb luck. But it's like, okay, well, lesson learned. Maybe uh, fear of missing out. Yeah, this this happens boring. sometimes with my uh, when I collect Star Wars figures, and sometimes what happens is they, I don't know if you know much about the modern line, but they sometimes re-release figures they've released maybe a decade or so ago, but you don't know until it happens that it's going to happen. So if you've got a, a piece missing in your collection, and you sometimes maybe see it on on eBay or whatever. And you kind of think, well, do I take, do I, do I go for it? Do I just buy it? I can afford it. Do I just do it? Um, and you know, sometimes you, if you do that, then you know, a couple of weeks or a couple of months later, it might well get re-released. Yeah. And yeah, you're just unlucky if that happens. So it's like you, you want to be a hardcore collector so that you, you never give up, but you also don't want to be so hardcore that you settle for paying big chunks of money for <laughs> something that you want. Yes, correct. I mean, it's like I suppose after a while you don't miss the money because you kind of forget about it. But yeah, um, you know, there's still there's still a little bit of ego involved in trying to get things it's for the best price you can. So yeah, it definitely is. Well, and maybe that's because it, it is a game. It's like yeah, I could just say you know what, I want a complete collection of just pick something randomly like Neo Geo games. So I'm gonna allocate ten thousand dollars. I'm gonna buy a complete set of Neo Geo games, and I I've got them. It's like I could do that or yeah. I could say I'm going to take 10 years and I'm going to slowly track each one down and get the best price I can. And it's like, is 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 uh, is the goal just having the stuff or is it the chase? Is the chase what I enjoy? Yeah, I mean, I, the, yeah. 
yeah, the chase is a big deal, isn't it? I mean, it's like as it as fun. That's part of the fun of collecting. It's like, oh um, man, I could have spent three hundred dollars. Although, I although it was, it, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it used to be more fun though because it used to be, you know, back in the day, it used to be you had to actually go somewhere to get something. But now, of course, mostly it's online. So, yeah. like, uh, I remember Shops. back in the back in the in the you know in the mid nineties when I was a student. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I would I would have to kind of go around, look, you know, Toys R Us and things like that, and mm-hmm. Forbidden Planet, um, and all in comic shops all over the the city, trying to find um, elusive figures. Um, so now it's much easier, but much less fun. Yeah, yeah, going to flea markets or uh, garage sales, and you just never know. Like some guys, like yes. yeah, I got what you need, and then you look at it and you're like, ah, that's that's in really terrible shape. I don't think I want that. <laughs> you walk away. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like, oh crap, really? Yeah, that can happen. Look. That's all you want for it? You uh-huh. sure? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm stealing <laughs> from you. Like, are you sure? Ah, it's to a good yeah. home. Like, all right. <laughs> it's also yeah. quite good fun haggling. You know, bartering yeah. over price as yes. well. It's great, uh, these kind haggling. of things. It's quite, it's quite good fun. That still happens, but. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you're going to be a collector, there's different ways you can do it. But I think definitely <laughs> the the scavenger hunt, the the chase, the the feeling of I got it for more value. I think that adds to it because yeah, it is it is yeah. ultimately a game. It's like well, in the grand scheme of things, does it really matter that much that I have these pieces of plastic or these pieces of paper? <laughs> you know, instead of just like looking yes, at absolutely. someone else's collection, I actually have it in my in my home and I can show it off uh-huh. or whatever. I think about yeah, some yeah. of these some of these collectibles like NECA figures where it's like if I take this out of the box, I know it's a piece of junk, but it's like people don't even want to do that. <laughs> they just want to keep it in the box and it's like so now we have this sealed box that just gets handed around. It goes around the globe and you know it it goes on one person's shelf, yeah, another person's yeah. shelf and you know it just it's never meant to actually be enjoyed. Uh, it's just it's just a thing people say "Ooh, the treasure yeah well my my rule for i mean my my rule for my uh collection is Mm -hmm. if i can i can see the product that's good i I like i mean i like i like to have my figures carded figures but i can still see them i can still see the figure um but i don't like these i don't like buying items from my collection where there's a product inside that i never get to see so i'm not i'm not into that so if yeah. I buy like a, 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 a Star Wars ship, I will open it up. I'll keep, I'll maybe keep the box, but I'll, I'll open it up and I'll, display I'll display it, it somewhere, and it'll yeah. be there to be enjoyed. To you enjoy. know, but the figures I like them mint, mint on card. Yeah, well, I maybe you could compare it to fine art. Like, what if you buy a painting, but it's like, it's wrapped in paper and sealed in a box, like versus you put it up on the wall, so now people can admire <laughs> yes. it. And go, ah, that's a good looking yeah. painting. <laughs> You know, it's got some nice colors and some yeah, nice composition. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, you can do the same thing with figures. Uh-huh. You can look at it yeah. as a little sculpture. But when I bought my Star Wars, yeah, I suppose it's like uh, it's, it, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. It's definitely an acquired place. It's like it's all about uh, what do you call it? Um, nostalgia. It's nostalgia that does it. You know, yeah. it's so powerful. The utility of it. Like when I was buying my Star Wars figure collection, I thought you know I could buy the carded figures. Um, I even thought, like, you can buy just, you could, like, print the cards and you can, like, card the figures yourself. But I wanted to buy, yeah. like, the beat up ones that had been, like, played with. And <laughs> because I guess that's that's kind of how I remembered it. I thought, you know, they've survived this long. So I have, like, all mm-hmm. these beat up Star Wars figures. And it's like, that does it for me. And they were a lot cheaper. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, interestingly, the the so you're you it sounds like you're describing the the original vintage figures from the nineteen seventies yeah, and eighties and yep yeah. What's interesting is that although they've started to re-release those, you know, they remolded them and re-releasing, yeah. trying to emulate exactly what they were. But the the originals haven't don't seem to have lost their value. You know, they still seem to have retained their value despite being re-released. So the actual original, you know, the original plastic Kenner figures seem to still hold the same value or, or better than they did um despite the fact that they're being remade yeah yeah it's funny i was thinking the the re-releases would be more valuable than the old ones just because there'd be fewer of them <laughs> but yeah yeah it's interesting that i mean I, I wonder how how time will 
how to, you know time time will tell, no doubt. Uh, because uh, the 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 re-releases, like if you think about certain figures, so like Princess Leia, um, start from a, from Star Wars, you know, it's very difficult to find an original Princess Leia with a with a nice tidy cape, um, with which is not all yellowed and such. But the re-release, you know, is uh, looks looks exactly like the original one did, um, but obviously it's mint. Um, so it's interesting. Maybe, yeah, maybe that'll happen over time. Maybe there'll be a distortion in the value as time goes on. But I'm, I'm more, I'm more kind of, I, I collect the vintage collection, so it's like vintage packaging, but it's more modern figures. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So it's yeah, like cause the, the packaging is like what the Kenner, Kenner figures. Yeah, I don't have nostalgia for the packaging because when you bought the toy, it's like you just ripped it up and you threw that away, and so yeah. I think the only one I remember was the Stormtrooper one because it had a picture of like the scene from the first Star Wars movie where there's like the fog and you see the Stormtroopers coming out of the smoke and it showed like four yeah. or five of them. So it's like, oh, cool. So we could like buy like four or five of these and I could have a Stormtrooper uh-huh. army. And my parents are like, nah, <laughs> you got the one. That's yeah, <laughs> you just got to pretend. And so I always kind of remembered that yeah, because yeah. I was thinking about it like, oh, man, I wish I had an army of Stormtroopers. But the rest of them, it's like. Yeah. I, no, I I I, I, I did keep uh, although I, although I ripped open my yeah. yeah yeah I mean although although I ripped open my my toys as a kid um mm-hmm. I did keep several of the card backs because on the card backs back then you might recall they had all you know all of the all of the figures to oh, date yeah. of like, what they had released so at the back of the card it yeah. had a brilliant big checklist. Here's the ones I want for Christmas. You circle. All and it was them. like, it was really funny because, you know, some of the later figures had like, you know, 70 or 80. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there, there were even figures that came out really late. Um, have you heard of the last 17? Yeah. Yeah. The only one of those that I actually had, I think, was uh, Anakin Skywalker. And that was just because... It was one of those ones where you could uh, cut out the UPCs and send them in to like get the mail-in figure. I think you just had to pay shipping. Like we were pretty frugal, because I I think my parents were just like, oh, you you get they would always get like, oh well, why don't you get this one because this one has the offer, and then you could send it in and get the free figure. And so I think I got all the free figures, but I think by the time they were releasing those other ones, those last seventeen, like. General Lando and a couple of those Ewoks and the Stormtrooper Luke. Like I wasn't interested in the in the toys anymore, so I never got any of those until like a long time later. Yeah, fun conversation about collecting. Uh, I just wanted to show this little clip here from PulseCon. Uh, what they were saying exactly. And this was reported on by a few people: Seekot Shem and Breathe Newt and some other people. But let's just listen here. So this is right after the D&D Wizards of the Coast talk. Okay. Okay, Okay, Later, who knows? Stay tuned to Hasbro Pulse for more information. So that's it from Avalon Hill for now. We have that one. Oh, Avalon Hill. So check this out. Skip right over it. Boiled before the trivia, but that's okay. We're live. Remember, we're live and we're real people. So check this out. Custom made hero quest dice. That's right. There we go. That's a beautiful picture. Okay. Yeah, this is exactly what was at Gen Con. Featuring a purple and turquoise swirl inside of clear resin dice. So this set of six dice themed to the Dread Veil feature custom symbols on all of their sides and come in a collectible carry tin. But but that's that's not all guys. This comes with a great scroll. This is, it's very, very cool. It actually transforms into a rolling mat for it. your dice. It, works. it is an incredible complement for your Hero Quest game. It even has a hidden compartment to carry your dice in it. You are gonna look so cool the next time you roll into a game night with one of these. Uh, I will personally be ordering mine as soon as they go up for sale later on HasbroPulse.com. Um, so I think that it's going to be 
an absolutely fantastic addition. If for some reason you're thinking to yourself, gosh, I really need to have some more Avalon Hill games in my life, you may want to go over to HasbroPulse.com. We have HeroQuest, we have Betrayal. It's almost spooky season. You're definitely going to want to have Betrayal to be they able to play. Halloween. Maybe we'll even do something season. a little bit special to celebrate Betrayal later. Who knows? Stay tuned to Hasbro Pulse for more information. So. That's it from Avalon Hill for now. We have that one really exciting new That's item it. for you to check out. Oh. So stay tuned to Hasbro Pulse, as I mentioned, for updates. And All right. Thank you, uh, whoever that person is. Glasgow, are you still with us? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to talk during the video in case I messed up your... Oh, oh no. Um, no, it's... Messed up your video or whatever. No, no problem. No problem. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, good chatting with you. So um, I was going to say one, one last thing about the collecting. So I think pretty much all the Star Wars figures that I collected, other than the ones I had as a kid, like I got Princess Leia and like the Jawas and stuff. They didn't have the capes. So I actually bought some like cheap inflatable toys that were like the right color. And I just like cut those up and I made my own <laughs> capes for them. I mean, they weren't perfect, but it worked well enough for me. So, yeah, people go out of their way to, like, get, like, reproduction, like, guns and stuff, all the little pieces that were lost. But, yeah, I guess collecting is pretty much what you make of it. If if you want to go all the way or if you just want to go part way or... Uh, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, the, I mean, the, a, a, lot, a lot of collectors, yeah. a, I, I, a, lot of, a lot of collectors, especially Star Wars collectors, seem to be quite OCD, um, and I include yeah. myself in that. So. Yeah, the, the little cardboard thing wasn't punched out on the on the uh, <laughs> on the on the tag or whatever. The the original yeah. price tag that says KB but toys the, one dollar is still there. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing though is like. There were because the, the the Kenner line ended in 1985, and you know I was like I was just a little kid in the early 80s. You know I was like um, when 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 Star Wars stopped, I'd briefly moved on to Masters of the Universe. Oh yeah. So you know so I I, I didn't so the back the back of the card backs I was describing. You know you maybe saw a lot of the Return of the Jedi figures, but you know there was there was figures that Kenner released that I wasn't even aware of until. I was at university, you know, and then, yeah. you know, you see them, you see them one day in like a random comic shop and you're like, what is that? It looks like a Star Wars figure, but I don't remember that. I yeah. thought I had all of them. No, I didn't have all of them. And of course, at that time, the internet was just, wasn't there, you know, so, um, so the, it was really fun to find out that Kenner had released figures I wasn't even aware of, um, which, which is impossible now, it just, uh, it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I know with a lot of the stuff that people collect, I think the first things I remember hearing about, it was comic books and baseball cards. And it was because yeah. people had thrown their stuff away or they just mistreated it. And so there was a, suddenly this high demand, this nostalgia for it. And yeah, people had just thrown the stuff away. So they were just like digging around for it. But then, like, the next generation, people were like, oh, this stuff's going to be worth something someday. So, like, they would mass produce it, yeah. and people would buy, like, lots of copies, and they would hang on to it. And so that kind of, like, destroyed yeah. collecting value, because now everybody knows. And so, like, yeah. the bottom <laughs> fell out of the market for a lot of these things. So it's it's always the stuff that nobody wants, or, you know, that they throw away, but then they want it later. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, like, absolutely. Like, look at the weird. look at the 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 kind of mid to late eighties craze of the garbage pail kids. I mean, they were they were yeah. like huge. Those. They were yep. huge, and there must have been, there must have been millions of them around the country, or maybe you know, mm -hmm. and maybe I mean tens of millions of them around the globe. Um, and they they are they're still they, they've come back in you know, the nostalgia. They've they've come back too, and like the original. Nasty neck and at an atom bomb. You know they cost. They can, they can they can go for mega bucks if they're mint and nicely centered and all that OCD stuff I mentioned earlier. <laughs> yeah, I remember kids at the playground would would show those off, and it was always just like the the weird and gross ones were the best. And I think they I want to say they were yeah. banned from the school because they were like, oh, this is 
this is, I don't know if it was, they thought it was gross or like people were selling them to each other and like ripping each other off. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our, our teacher, they, they, ba- they banned they them like, in our no. school. Yeah. They ba- the, the, yeah. The, t- the teachers hated them. The parents hated them. Yeah. Um, it was just the kids who liked them, but they were, I think they were actually, I mean, okay. As well as the, as well as the fact that they were kind of gross and they had kind of like, um, you know, you know what, what, what we, would, we would certainly now consider inappropriate humor. Yeah. But they were clever as well, and they, they and they, you know they, they taught kids about alliteration and rhyme and and humor and double entendre, and they, they, there was yep. there was there was some clever stuff there too. There was, there was some education in GPK. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was mocking the uh, the crate. Well, it's funny because it was the Cabbage Patch Kid fad craze, and they were mocking it, but then they became their own yeah. fad craze. I'm like, oh, kids, you gotta spend all your money on this, and <laughs> like, adults got into collecting the stuff too, and it was like shoving yeah. the kids out of the way. Makes me think of yeah. like Jingle All the Way, <laughs> you know, Tickle Me Elmo yeah. and <laughs> Turbo Man. <laughs> Turbo yeah. time. Yeah, funny <laughs> stuff. That's true. Well, so all that yeah. fun yeah, it's stuff, good stuff aside, yeah. Good, good stuff. Um, so we got Hero Quest. So we burned through the first half hour of our time together, but um, so we got a new quest to start, and you are the first one here. So, what hero would you like? Uh, well, I've been the elf so far in Mage of the Mirror, so let's stick with the elf. All right, classic elf. I just got to see what I did with him. Ah, here he is, and all his uh, and all his glory. Yeah, it would be wrong to pick any other hero right now. <laughs> yep. We'll change horses in midstream. All right, so uh, I've been doing the little interactive thing. So you've got some you've got some gold to spend. Yeah, I mean, I've I've tried to kind of pull together my notes from before, but I'm sure I've made some mistakes. So it might be worth a quick run through of what the elf currently has, if you don't mind. Not at all, not at all. Okay, so as far as equipment, he's got his longsword, crossbow. He's got a warhammer, a shield, a helmet. He's got the Elven Bracers artifact, the Elven Chainmail, and since it's a new quest, you can of course pick your uh, spells if you want. Um, previously, you had Earth yeah, I, and Hypnotic Blaze. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. I think that that little configuration has worked well so far. So let's go with Earth and Hypnotic Blaze. Perfect. Okay, and you do have an Elven Cloak of Passage that you found. That's good for three uses. Oh, yeah. That you can pass through rock with. Uh, oh, yeah, that was gifted to me, actually, yeah. Ah, yes, yes. Okay, so we've got uh, quite a list of potions here. We've got Fire Resistance, uh, Potion of Vision, Air Walk, Wolf's Bane, Uh, superior Restoration, Healing Plus Four, Magical Aptitude, Magical Resistance Against Damage, you've got two of those, Antidote, And then I have down that you have 1,110 gold coins. Wow, I'm loaded. Yep. Uh, can you remind me what the Elven Bracers do? Yeah, the Elven Bracers in- increase your um, maximum body points from 6 to 8 and mind points from 4 to 5. Oh, yes. So it's more of a buff than it is... Uh, armor it's not really armor at all it's yeah magical yeah that's the mistake i made before because i remembered the the wizard's bracers from the original hero quest game which yep. increased his body point as a his defense dice sorry by one yeah yeah okay 
Uh, right, so we've got some money to spend, so let's go. Let's go shopping. All right. Let me uh, let me grab the uh, the armory here. Oh. Ordicon redeemed a bonus equipment for hero. Oh, I forgot I, I added sound effects. Thank you, Ordicon. All right, so he's giving you equipment already. <laughs> you could always, uh, if you didn't want it, you could always cash it in. You could always sell it. Ah, rallying horn. Okay, so this is one of the custom things that I made. So this would give you, well, it would allow you to uh, alert your allies to give them one extra movement die. But if you use it too often, a uh, wandering monster could be triggered. Ah, okay. That sounds interesting. So rallying horn. Let's, let's take that. Yep. Great stuff. Thank you. And if there's something that you want that you don't see here, you just let me know. So we got our battle axe, short sword, dagger, shield, chainmail, bracers, helmet, longsword, staff, crossbow, plate mail, your favorite, broadsword, <laughs> hand axe, rapier, toolkit. <laughs> You're pretty loaded so far. Um, I was thinking you actually have uh, the Warhammer, which is a two-handed weapon, and the shield. So you can't use them both simultaneously. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of up to you if you want to yeah. keep those or sell something off. Yeah, I mean, as the... As the as, as, do, do you play that the battle axe is two-handed? Now you've also got potions you could buy too. Yeah. Now you do have quite a quite an array of potions already. Sorry. Sorry, I think the sound went there. Can I just check with you? So battle axe, you can't combine battle axe with a shield. Is that correct? Right. Right. Okay. Um, so basically, I can't have four attack dice and carry a shield. Right. Right, and I currently defend with six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'll just stick with my weapons as they are. Then I, I like I like uh, six defense dice. I'd probably take I'd probably take uh, three attack six defense over four attack five defense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. And in terms of interchanging yeah. weapons, how does how does that work again? So. Like, let's say, for example, I decide on one turn that I want to switch to my Warhammer. Mm -hmm. um, how quick? How quickly am I allowed to put it away and take my shield out? Uh, that'll be for the next turn. Hey. Uh, okay, so I think I know what I'm going to buy. Um, so could I buy a toolkit, first of all? Sure. All right, toolkit. So that's 250. Um, can you remind me what portion of battle rage does? Uh, that's is that bar just barbarian only? That's barbarian only. Ah, yes, right. I understand. Okay, so ah, uh, okay. Uh, let's buy a portion of battle though. Okay, that's the one that lets you re-roll your uh, dice, your attack dice. Do I have to reroll all of them or just select dice? All of them. Okay. Uh, right. And is there a difference between the potion of greater restoration and potion of superior restoration? Uh, they're the same. Right. They're the same. That's fine. And okay. So, so far I've got potion of battle and a toolkit. Um, could I also buy a potion of dexterity? Good idea. And is that is that three hundred? One hundred. One hundred, yeah, right. So you should have five sixty left. Uh, yes, five sixty left.
So potion battle, potion dexterity. And uh, did you have any desire um, to buy the uh, the uh, fifty percent chance of failure potions for half price from the uh, shady <laughs> market guy next door? No, I, I'm I'm far too boring for that sort of thing. <laughs> So far, nobody's taken up that uh, that offer. Maybe that's why they cut it from the. Yeah, I'm. I'm... You were <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm far, far too boring for that. Um, okay, uh, do you know? I think I think that'll do for now. Uh, let's leave myself with my five hundred and sixty. Excellent. And sorry, could you remind me of the of the exact rules for potion of dexterity? Yeah. <clears throat> so the potion of dexterity, when you use it, you either get five extra squares of movement, or it's a guaranteed uh, pit jump. Right. Okay. I couldn't remember about the pit jump. The pit jump i remembered the extra movement but i wasn't sure how many squares so guaranteed pit jump and the other one that does guaranteed pit jump i have is a potion of air walk i have yep. that as well already um yep. yeah okay great stuff thank you excellent okay all right so the elf is uh heading out we'll just clear the Clear the board here. And we'll just kind of start you off by yourself. You're pretty capable. You know your way around a, around a battle. You've uh, been around a little bit. Pretty good with a sword. Um, and this quest... I'll just refresh you here, is called Trellia's Maze. So this is Mage of the Mirror, Quest 3. As your final test, Trellia has decreed that you must traverse a dangerous maze of her own de devising. She has placed captured monsters within this maze, promising them their freedom if they can kill you. You will pass the test only if you find a golden book and leave the maze to tell of it. Trellia's guards will bring you to the Iron Door, that leads into the maze. Return to the iron door to leave the maze and end the test. And I'm to tell you that the treasure cards are not used in this quest and that there's no wandering monsters in this quest. So in other words, if you're gonna search your, for treasure, you're either gonna get nothing or you're gonna get whatever treasure may be in that room. <laughs> Wardicon okay, says the okay. elf is becoming OP, though the road ahead is very difficult. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I like I like the sound of no wandering monsters, and I have to say, I I I do like the idea that oftentimes when you search for treasure, you should find nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, the, I remember the I remember the original Hero Quest game. Um, the certainly the UK version did have a nothing card in the treasure deck, and I thought there should have been ten nothing cards in the treasure deck. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the yep. one. Yep, I just printed that out for, yeah. for fun. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. I love it. Listen, the, the treasure deck should be two thirds of that card. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing. Yeah, it's, it's so real. It's much more realistic. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you, despite a thorough search, you find nothing. <laughs> uh, I mean, of course, the game is completely grounded in reality, so we want you know more realism. Yeah, there's just gold coming out of. <laughs> Coming out of every every uh, nook and cranny. Yeah. Okay. So should we go for it then? Welcome to Ribby and uh, Rantcast. And wait, no. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't really much to talk about on the Rantcast as far as Hero Quest, and it, it was it was kind of somber actually, because we, we were talking about how we felt like Star Wars just wasn't for us anymore. It's like they've just kind of moved on. It's like, oh, it's so sad. <laughs> But maybe it won't always be that way. But we're just talking about the new stuff coming out, not necessarily. I mean, yeah. the stuff. I you mean, love I, I, I quite. 
yeah, I mean, I, I quite, I quite like uh, some of the new stuff. Like, I like, I like Mandalorian, and I like. Um, oh, so far, I quite like Ahsoka. Good for you. So, I mean, I like it because it's quite close to the original trilogy. And, you know, it's kind of closely related. Um, I'm not really a a prequel fan. I'm not really a, a and I'm not at all a sequel fan. Um, oh. Interesting. I like some of the I like some of the new a new the new television. So like I did back the ghost, you know the Haslab ghost. Oh yeah. It's uh, I think it looks looks gorgeous. Yeah. Well, and I don't begrudge people. I think at one time I used to just kind of like raise my eyebrows, like really you like that, <laughs> like, but now I'm just like uh, <laughs> you know if if there's something in there that that you enjoy, ah, more power to you. It's yeah. fine. I just don't different get excited. Odds. Different odds. About it. Yeah. Yeah, different different odds for different odds, eh? <laughs> I like that. I hadn't heard that one before. <laughs> different swords for different folks, or something. I don't know. Odds for sods. I like it. Okay. All right. Well, uh, your quest begins behind the iron door. So, board is yours. Okay. So, uh, let's let's just step in one square, and we'll do a search for traps down the central corridor. All right. You step into the room, or to the corridor, I should say, and on either side there are stone walls. Let's double check here. And there's a door here. And I'm going to say with your eagle vision, you, you notice uh, stone wall there. Okay, so you're searching for traps or secret doors. Yeah, um, and can I ju can I just um, can I just assure you that I do not have the quest book in front of me. With the way I said, I step in and I search the central corridor for traps. Almost implies that I knew there was walls to either side, which I didn't. I just decided I was going to head straight down the middle. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm searching the central corridor. Yeah, okay. For no, traps, please. No traps detected. Okay. Um, so. Can we also do a search now for secret doors? Ah, warp back to your turn. Yep, uh, no no secret doors either. Uh, I just want to acknowledge something real quick. So Elverg says PulseCon is wrapped up. Interesting that the end graphic shows some modern HeroQuest figures on sprues. Interesting. Ooh, is that new, is that new figures? I'm guessing not, but... Um... See what he's talking about here. We're gonna keep getting distracted. Thanks, Avalon Hill. Thanks, Hasbro. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Yeah, they were using this this image of sprues. Not sure what he means here. Hero Quest figures. These don't look like Hero Quest figures. Oh, these these little tiny things here. Is that some kind of tease? Yeah, I see mummies. I see skeletons. Oh, these down here are these uh looks like the heroes gargoyle yeah it's like the undead figures i mean i guess that's just a decoration it's not really an easter egg because there's there's nothing new it's just uh what we've seen before now watch like a few hours from now somebody's gonna say well actually if you you know Zoom and enhance like 20 times, you'll see this thing that nobody realized. <laughs> like, all right, for now, start graphic as well. I don't think it's a tease. I think someone is marketing and made neat graphics. Yeah. Could be. All right. Well, thanks for the little detail. Okay. So, uh, so far, so good. You're not seeing any uh, anything extra in that corridor. 
Okay, so can I move up to the door? All right. Let's get some Carl Casey going. Okay, so just one, two, three. And let's open. Opening the door. Mage of the Mirror Quest 3 Trellia's Maze live on Twitch not live on YouTube and those of you in the Quest Talk of course or I mean yeah you can join us in Quest Talk if you'd like if you'd like to control a hero but for now uh, those of you in the Twitch chat can influence the quest with your gold coins if you'd like alright see a sorcerer's table and you also see a zombie. Okay, let's uh, let's fire our crossbow at the zombie. All right, let me get the uh, dice roller on screen. One skull. Oh, I need to see if it's an elite or not first. Oh, it is. Okay. So he rolls blue dice. No defense. Got him. <laughs> Darkness availed him not. Okay, uh, okay, let's take one step inside the room. Alright. And can we do a search for traps? Okay, so we're warping back to your turn again. Alright, yes. Uh, searching for traps. No traps. like it's your turn again okay um my turn again okay i'll search for secret doors uh there is a secret door <sighs> okay uh so let's just go straight for the secret door and open it all right you open the door Let's see, there is a giant wolf. Okay. An ogre. And a Femir. <laughs> oh, this is going to be easy. <laughs> um, can I just check something just to make sure I'm not cheating? Um, on this turn so far, have I searched for secret doors and moved? And therefore, it's just my move and it's the monster's turn? Yeah. Oh dear, I sh really should have just, <laughs> I should have waited for my next turn and moved only. Yep. Oh dear. That's the that's the great thing about giving oh. the heroes like so much freedom. They uh, walk right into it. <laughs> oh, shocking. Okay. Um. Uh, what what does potion of magical aptitude do again? That would allow you to use two spells on your turn instead of one. Okay, that doesn't count though because I've searched this turn, haven't I? So I've had my action. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, I was going to say, of, of the potions that you have, I mean, battle is a reroll after you've attacked. Everything else is, like, reacting to stuff. Yep. How much further can I move? Um, do, I, do I now roll for movement? Yeah, you, or should, you should. I've uh, moved two squares. So. Yeah, roll your 2d6 and subtract two is what you would do. I see. Oh, yes, I, I remember that now. You just grab some tissues here. One moment. Okay, seven. So you got five left. All right, so what'll it be? Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to do something that... I'm, this is probably going to look really silly, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to move uh, into the room. And then I'm going to move to south into the corner. And I might live to regret this, but I'll pass the turnover now. Okay, well, the uh, giant wolf should be able to attack you diagonally from here, because he does have that ability. Uh, let's see, and he attacks with... Oh six. dear, I forgot about that. Yeah, the big monster rule. Oh dear. And they oh, roll. I'm such a patzer. Gotta roll for elites here, so there's... Mirror. Okay, so he's normal. Alright, six. Alright, two skulls and a wrestling move. Do I defend now? Yeah. Get your six defense. Um. Ching. sound effects yeah the sound effects help a lot uh, to remind me that people are cashing stuff in I'm trying to help you out I hear him trying to help you out <laughs> okay so you oh thanks Ribby okay so two bonus potions for you so you've taken one damage and you're about to take another one Uh, let's see. I should put the body points back on screen here. Just a moment. All right, let's get your two bonus potions here. Restoration. That's one and one. And potion of speed. That's the twelve squares and two attacks. Oh yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. All right, let's see what the wrestling move was. Thump power slam. <laughs> so the wolf uh, grabs you in its paws. Puts you behind its back and just like slams you to the ground. Ugh. That's not cool. It's like it, it, it briefly it you know it looked like a giant wolf and then briefly it looked like a guy wearing like a, a werewolf suit and then it went back to like <laughs> looking like a uh, an actual. Well, you know, that, that, that's really creepy. Have you, there's a film. Have you seen a film called Creep? Creep? No, I haven't. 
that is a creepy film, and it remind and what you just said reminded me of it. Oh, <laughs> cool. I was thinking of uh, the line, "The Witch in the Wardrobe," like the BBC version from like back in the day, where it was yeah. like an actual wolf, yeah. and then the kid goes to fight him, and then it and then it's like just a guy in a wolf costume, like, <laughs> and then it goes back to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that that makes me feel a bit better. <laughs> Yeah, Nighty Nightmares, kids. Okay, other monster. Uh, let's see. I guess I can do both. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to stick to the rules here. Um, ogres only move four squares. Two, three, four. It can still reach you. Two, three, four. That's going to attack with six also. Three skulls. Crikey. Cha-ching! No damage. Or no, one damage. Sorry, you blocked two. <clears throat> Slash not sorry. Okay. <coughs> Down to five. And then the last of my villains, the Femir, is going to go one, two. And he only attacks with three. Two skulls. and you get a wrestling move. Uh, okay, let's do... Let's do a shoulder breaker. Ah, okay. So you grab his arm and do the little... Ugh, 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 ah. Looks painful. All right, so the Femir takes some damage. All right, Elf, it is your turn. Okay, I am going to drink my potion of magical aptitude. All right. Next, I'm going to cast Hypnotic Blaze. Whoosh. Hypnotic Blaze. I gotta grab that card. Do you happen to have it uh, handy? Okay, so uh, it's about everyone misses three turns, but they can defend against it uh, with their mind points. They've got to. Um, oh, there's some rule about rolling less than your mind points or something like that. That's right. I should probably pull it up on my my end just so I can. Yeah, sorry, I, I I'm I'm a bit vague on the exact detail, but yeah. keep myself honest too. It's a very very useful spell. Yeah, you can see I've kept it until the crunch moment in the quest. <laughs> Alright, so one of the elf spells, the Hypnotic Blaze. When the spell is cast, an illusion of a huge animated flame appears. Every figure in the room or corridor, except for the spellcaster, must roll one red die. A figure that rolls equal to or less than its mind points is unaffected by the illusion. Rolling a, great, a number greater than its mind points means the figure is paralyzed for three turns, unable to move, attack, or defend. So it's not like where they get a chance every... every uh, turn to defend it's just one and done and they suffer the consequences okay so the femir or abomination has three mind points so we'll roll for his first
got a three. If your roll is equal to or less, then he's unaffected. Okay, so he's unaffected. And now the giant wolf has one mind point. So chances are he's not going to do too well. Four. Yeah, okay. So he is totally mesmerized by this hypnotic blaze. And then the ogre... Not a very smart guy either. He's only got two. Got a five. Okay, so he's affected by it. So these two monsters just get completely suckered in by your by your spell. All right, and what's your <clears throat> what's your second uh, second spell gonna be? Okay, I'm now going to cast Pass Through Rock. Okay. Pass Through Rock. And let's roll my roll my movement dice. Okay, so let's go one south. All right, so you pass through the wall, uh, requiring me to reveal that room. So inside this room, you see some stuff. You see uh, a door there. see a trap door here a zombie right next to you and a goblin the door And that's what you see. All right, you okay. Some... Uh, can we go? So that's eight. So that's one of one so far. So let's go one east, uh, three south. All right. So you're, are you going into the trap door? No, I'm going to just bypass the trapdoor. I'm going to go down to the end to the wall. So just p pass over the trapdoor down to the south. Did I do that right? Uh, sorry. So um, what I'm doing is I'm just going to, uh, from where I was at the corner. I'm going uh, one west, sorry, one east, and then uh, street three south. Oh, okay so that I'm straight down. Yeah, so um, I'm just immediately to the south of the trap door. Yep. And let's go, let's go one more south. And you've landed on a spear trap. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> nope. All right, roll one combat die to see if it hits you. You're having a laugh. Evil laugh. Skull. All right, you take one body point of damage and your turn is over. All right. Brutal. Brutal. <clears throat> All right, my turn. Except now these monsters really can't uh, can't pursue you. Just double check something here. <clears throat> Okay. 
actually. I'm gonna send the monster through the trapdoor. And I'm gonna send the other one through the trapdoor as well. Let's see. I guess I can pursue. By going around the other other direction. One, two, three, four. Hypnotic blaze, remember? Oh shoot, can't move. <laughs> Dag nabbit. That's the best. Okay, so he tries but fails. He can't leave the room. Neither can the wolf. Alright, well the Femir can try. Four, five, six. So that's turn number one that those guys are stuck. <laughs> All right, back to you, sir. Uh, can I just check a rule? Um, let's say I let's say I was considering using my potion of speed, but I would quite like to see what my movement roll was first. Is that permissible, or do I have to commit? Um, well, the potion of speed is going to give you twelve squares, so no need to roll. Yeah. Yeah, Ribby, that's intentional. Uh, right now, those other heroes are not in play. That's why I'm doing it like that. To make it less confusing, though, I could just do this. Uh, sorry, I think I lost sound there. Um, I don't know if you heard me. Uh, so... I'm, I'm thinking about rolling for movement, but I'm also wondering about using my potion of speed. So I want to check and see whether I can roll my movement and then drink a potion of speed to add to it. Oh, to do both? Hmm. Yeah, I would allow it. So like if you rolled 12 and then drank the potion, you get 24. Sure, why not? All right, Glasgow, can you uh, hear me now? I'm saying yes, yes, you can. All right, can you hear me, Glasgow? your question multiple areas there so you can see okay so he rolled a nine I don't know if you leave and come back if that'll fix it nine hey Glasgow hear me now I can't hear you if you're speaking I can't hear you oh, I heard something there hello can you hear me yeah loud and clear okay sorry about that um, so uh, I've just went ahead and rolled for movement and I think I've got nine so um, I'm not going to drink any potion of speed <laughs> I'm going to risk it 
Um, I'm going to risk traps here, but I'm going to go for it. So I'd like to go one east and open the door. The room is already revealed, so there's your door. And <clears throat> does Potion of Air Walk last my entire movement? Yes. Okay, I'm going. Can I and can I drink that mid walking, mid mid movement? Sure. Okay, so let's drink the potion of air walk as well, and we'll we'll head north through the next door. Okay, so you're just going straight ahead. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you're right up to the door. Dare I ask if you're going to open it? Yep. <laughs> I mean, like you say, those monsters are under the effects of the I blade. am indeed. Yeah, let's open the door, and we're going to go back to the same corner that I stood in before. back okay <clears throat> and and I'm going to yeah yeah, ju just before I before I attack, um, the potion of battle. Um, uh, I mean, do, do I do I drink that when I when I intend to re-roll, or is it just that that gives me the option to re-roll until monsters are no longer in sight or something? Well, it's it's a one-time use. So let's say you roll your attack and you're just you don't like what you just rolled. You drink the potion, you just get to re-roll it. That's that's all it is. I see. I see. Great. Okay, so let's use uh, our let's use our uh, longsword uh, to attack the ogre. All right. He does not get to attack, or I mean, not get to defend. <laughs> so. Well, you missed, but you did get a wrestling move. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... No, let, let's, let's go po let's go Potion of Battle on that one and re-roll. Okay. You do the little head fake thing and you don't actually attack him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, a respectable one skull. Alright, that's a hit. He's down to four. All he can see are animated flames. One of them poked him in the face. All right. Okay, I, I think I'll pass the pass my turnover. That's my turnover. All right. Okay, so those monsters are still uh, still occupied with the illusion. So the Femir is going to try to run back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the Femir attacks. One skull. 
Ching. Just deflected it. All right, looks like that's my turn. To the Valiant Elf. Okay. My potion, my potion of speed allows me to attack twice as well. Yes. Okay, I'll drink my potion of speed. All right. Okay. And can I switch? Can I switch to my Warhammer, please? Yep. Okay, so that means you're okay, putting, so I'm putting going... the shield away. Putting the shield away, yep. So you're down to five defense, but you now have four attack. Okay, so let's attack the the Femir first. Oh, okay, so you're attacking two different monsters. Three skulls. Wow. Okay. Nothing. Got him. Clobbered him. Alright, that's scratch one from here. And for your second Okay, attack. and now uh, let's attack the ogre again. Okay. One skull and he has no defense. If I remember correctly, this is the last turn where I can't, these monsters can't do anything. So, back to you. Um, so, that, sorry, it's still my turn. Yeah, I can still move. Oh, that's true, because you were boxed in. Yeah, you can still. It's still your turn. Yeah, so I used my potion to speak. Yeah, I'm okay, so I'm going to take one. St yeah, what? I'll t I'll just take one step to the. Yeah, one st one step to the east in front of the where the in front of the giant wolf. Yeah. Okay, so I'll pass my turn. They're still distracted. Back to you. Okay, so with my war hammer, I'll attack the giant wolf. Single attack, two skulls. It's two hits. He's got four left. Or I'm sorry, three left, because he's got five total. Three left. So both the ogre and the giant wolf have three body points left. Yep. <clears throat> well, no, it doesn't let you move okay. attack move, so are you just going to hit him again? Uh, sorry, when I, when I moved, that was my last turn. So on this turn, I've only used my warhammer. Yeah, but you still get two attacks. Oh, do I? Do I really? Yeah. Oh, I thought... I th So because I use my potion of speed, I still get two attacks? Every turn, yeah. It's just until you lose one body point of damage, then it goes away. Oh, so right. Every turn... Oh, that's 12, amazing. 12 I, I really... I yeah. need to buy... Yeah. yeah, I need to buy more of these potions of speed. I love these potions of speed. Okay, so let's, let's attack again. Yep. Yeah, because before you were just Let's buying it because the you again. had the plate mail. <laughs> yeah, alright. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I should have treated it as a combined attack. I mean, he can't defend anyway. So it's one more hit. 
So now he's only got two left. Two, three, four. Or what am I saying? Uh, no, it should be, it was four skulls. So he should have one left. There we go. Did that wrong before. So, no, I, ju I just I just got two skulls there. Yeah, but the last time you attacked him, you got two skulls. I don't think I counted it right. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Okay, so he he's got one. He's got one left. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's time for me to to get out of here. So. All right. Monster let's. let's... Oh no! Sorry. Um. Uh, so I'm. I'm. St I'm st I can still move twelve. Is that correct? Right, okay, so I'm going to now uh, move two west. Or I guess it'd be east on my screen. So, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's east, yeah, two, two east. Um, is that door... Oh, sorry, I thought that door was one square. I thought that door was one square to the to the west of where it currently is. I thought I, that door moved, was straight ahead. I moved the door. <laughs> Whoops. Right. Sorry. So so what I want to do is I want to move to the door and move through the door. And I want to go two south and then one west onto the trap onto the trap door. Okay. All right. There is a slight danger with the trap door. Um, roll one combat die. If it's a skull, you lose one body point. But you do travel through the tunnel. Ooh, lost one body point. Typical. Bumped your head on the thing as you were going through it, I guess. Okay. So that means portion of speed is gone now? Yep. Oh, Dear. But you do travel through to the other side. So you travel to the other trap door, which is here. You come out on the other side of the tunnel. It ends your turn, but you do get to see what's what's there. Which is the door. And you can see just out of the corner of your eye, another door. Oh, dang. So Elverg says dice are live for pre-order for premium orders now. 30 minutes until everyone else. $34.99 for a set, limit two per customer. Well, that's a little more expensive than I thought they would be, but I guess it does come with that scroll too. It's not just the dice and the tin. If it were just the dice in a baggie, it would be a lot cheaper. But it's the whole package. Thanks, Ferg. I was just gonna say, um, let's take a quick look at the picture. So this is from PulseCon. Appreciate the update. Okay, so Hero Quest, the Dread Veil dice set with scroll, dice mat, and storage. Pre order $34.99. And that's under ideal lighting conditions. That's what they look like. The ones I had, which I think are exactly the same as these, they've got a little bit of like blue glitter inside them as well. But when you just like put them on a table, they just, they're kind of hard to see unless the light is like shining right on top of them. There's what they are on the mat. It's like faux leather. Designer stuff, fancy stuff. Let's see. I don't know, what do you think of that price? <laughs> it's like an ice cube. The detailing on them is pretty good. I mean, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really, dice don't bother me too much. I mean, they're nice, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay that for them. Mm -hmm. 
but $34.99 as opposed to $350 on eBay. <laughs> yeah, you make a fair point. I mean, the fact is, anytime anything comes out of one of those conventions, people immediately scalp it. Um, and yeah, those people are kicking themselves now, I'm sure. I wouldn't put it past yeah, I mean, I've people got, I've to got... buy these and then try to scalp them again, hoping that people don't realize they, that they're available. Oh, absolutely. 100% that'll happen. It says premium members only. Let's see how many. Oh, limit two per customer. Not available to ship to Quebec, Canada. They always get the short end. But there's nothing to translate. What, what's the big deal? The title has to be in French. Step into the world of HeroQuest or captivating Dreadvale dice set. A must have for all tabletop gaming enthusiasts. Special collections, six custom themed dice, each bearing the iconic symbol necessary for battling Zargon. Well, but what if Zargon wants to use these? I mean. Okay. Prismatic glitter dust. To elevate your gaming experience to legendary heights, we've included the Hero Quest dice mat and storage. This versatile accessory unfurls to create a smooth rolling surface your dice, akin to the binding of the lore tome itself. <laughs> Moreover, it boasts a concealed zipper compartment. A secret vault for securely and stylish, stylishly carrying your dice. Ensure they remain as well protected as the treasures you'll uncover on your epic journey. Elevate your gaming adventure to the kingdom of Elethorn with the Dreadvale dice set. And here request scroll dice mat and storage. May the dice always roll in your favor as you heed mentor's call. Age 16 plus, because you know, you might like try to eat the dice and choke on them if you're 15, I guess. Weird. Well, anyway, <laughs> not not tested, not tested on animals. <laughs> well, anyway, all that frivolity aside, yeah, it's like they had to ham that up. I had to ham it up too. Okay, back to our adventure. Okay, so the uh, the elf's turn is ended. Uh, he's appeared on the other side of the trap door. And now I think my... <laughs> Ribby says they do look like candy. Yeah, they do. Ribby says... Uh, oh, Elverg says... Oh, go way back. They're talking. Okay, so Elverg says, Ooh, from Avalon Bill just now, also good news is that not a limited run item. If there's demand for more, we can make more. Fair point. Ribby says it's a bit high. Elverg says it's a good price for the two. You'd expect $15 for the dice and $20 for a mat. Well, yeah, if you walk into any of these friendly game shops, they nickel and dime you with all this stuff. Like, everything is a premium price. Because these are for, like, snobs and elites and people who really take their gaming extremely seriously. Me, I, I just like to make my own stuff, usually. Um, Ruby says, I'd say 25 to 30. I mean, you can buy these scrolls, non-Hero Quest branded, for like 12 bucks. But I'm still buying it, so eh. Elverg says, exactly. Ruby says, for branded, yeah, I get it. They do look like candy. Yep. Well, that's the thing. The, the person who just says, well, I don't get it. They're just dice. I already have dice. Those They're not going to buy it. Whereas the people who want to collect everything, the people who want the fancy stuff, they'll pay for it. And 35 is not 350. Ah, bonus potion for hero. <laughs> I don't get why it plays that sound effect so many times. It definitely gets my attention, though, which is what I intended. Okay, so Ribby just redeemed a bonus potion for Hero. It's the monster's turn, anyway. Rejuvenation. Skill card for Hero. Oh! Alright, thanks, guys. Thanks, Wardicon. 
Okay, so skill card for hero. Roundhouse. So there's a two-handed weapon attack for you. And you've got the rejuvenation, which is just like a 1d6 healing, and a bonus treasure search. Thanks, guys. Okay, but it is the monster's turn. So the Thanks very much. The hypnotic blaze has finally died down, and the monsters are like, huh? So, let's see. We're going to have to try to pursue. One, two, three, four. Comes the ogre. Giant wolf could pursue. It's going to be interesting. It's nine squares. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, pushing you to the side, eight, so that he can be in there. He can do that. Doesn't say he can't. <laughs> Playtesting. I'm going to write a strongly worded letter to Mentor about this. <laughs> well, and as it pushes you there, you see uh, there's a stone wall right here. Well, that's better than a, go a goblin and a zombie that I expected to see. <laughs> Okay, well, it ends my turn, so I don't get to attack you. So now it's back to the elf. So we're back to regular attacks. And are you still oh, wielding oh. your warhammer, or? I, I I am I am still wielding my warhammer. Yes, right now I am. Uh, so I am going to clobber this giant wolf right across the face with my warhammer. And I like animals, I do, but I don't like this one. <laughs> ah, yeah, Elverg, you're probably right. I probably multiplied it. Okay. A complete miss. But, uh, although you didn't kill him with the clown hammer, you do get a wrestling move. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go do a swinging neckbreaker. Ah, a classic. So, ah. And you got him. For some reason, I picture him like flashing and disappearing, like an old school video game. Yes. Got him. Got him. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, let's just. Um... Let's just what? Um, we've got an ogre who moves four. Yeah, it's pretty slow. Okay, let's let's just stay where we are. We'll just end our turn. Ah, very sporting of you. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Now the ogre is on the other side, but his turn ends. Okay, so I'll head one north and attack the ogre with the warhammer. All right. All right, so you got two skulls. Four defense. Nothing. Two hits. Come on. He's down to one now. Just got him. Alright. 
my turn. We got six attack. Three skulls. Oh, crikey. Cha-ching. And one damage. Slowly whittling you down. Down to two. All right, back to you. Okay, so no prizes for guessing what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, so let's clobber this guy. Two skulls. Nothing. Got him. You pounded him down back into the into the hole. <laughs> say one of the Mortal Kombat games Shao Kahn had a move where he would like pound the person into the ground like like a cartoon some character had something like that some fatality um, a, um yeah I can't I can't remember but yeah there was some really cool fatality moves <laughs> maybe a Shiva the four-armed uh, monster lady she would just like kind of be like pounding down on you with hammer blows and you just like kind of get pushed down into the ground yeah all right no more monsters you got them all okay uh, i think i'll just end my turn there And with nothing for Zargon to do, it's your turn again. Okay, um, I'm going to cast Rock Skin on myself. Rock Skin. Okay. And as a champion, I'm going to give you two extra defend. So a total of seven until you take damage. Yep. Okay, and I'll just end my turn there as well. All right, your turn again. Okay, let's move. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Uh, okay, let's just let's just open this door in front of me. All right, entering into the green room. Okay. In this room you see a treasure chest to the north. As well as the zombie and the skeleton. But no goblin that you were missing. Do I, do I recognize the zombie? <laughs> Jim? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not him. <laughs> You see, he's got like a uh, a fake-looking mustache, like in a, a monocle. <laughs> okay, where is that zombie and goblin gone? I wonder if there's a I wonder if there's a secret passage inside the tunnel. Hmm. Okay. Um. Right. So, what to do? Zombies can move five squares, is that right? Yes. Two, three, yeah. I believe that's accurate. Okay, let's let's just go let's go two west and attack the skeleton, assuming I don't fall into a trap. fallen into a pit trap oh you're joking oh 
that is so uncool. <laughs> Alright, down to one, and that ends your turn here. Has rock skin gone as well? Yep. Oh, that is so unfair. <sighs> it's not an easy one. Oh dear, I do not like this Terelia person. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh. Um, as I'm falling down the pit, can I drink? Uh, can I drink my healing plus four? Yes. Cross it off, and you are up to five. Elberg says, I forgot to look at the ship date, February 1st, 2024. Oh, so nasty. All right. Yeah, it's definitely a nasty part. You know, that's why I like going through secret doors, because most... Well, I've never seen a Hero Quest map where a secret door tile leads into a trap immediately. Yeah. yeah, because you don't have secret door tiles and pit trap tiles sharing a square. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I prefer I almost, moving through secret doors. I almost want to say that I have seen an instance where that is the case, but yeah, usually it isn't, because usually they would have to have two overlapping squares or tiles and so they just don't do it most of the time but some quest designers are a little more uh, sadistic than others <laughs> yeah that's evil okay my turn roll to see if these guys are elites okay so the zombie is an elite okay so the skeleton is gonna move an attack now since you're in the pit you defend with one less but the skeleton only attacks with two So you actually defend with four. So two skulls. Ching and a wrestling move. Oh yes. Okay, let's do a let's do a pile driver. <laughs> is that is that still allowed? Is that is that maybe that's maybe that's illegal now actually? Oh yeah. Well, uh, they cut to commercial break during the commercial break. <laughs> you grab a, the a guy. pile driver straight down into the pit, please. Come <laughs> him. Ah, Got him. I was thinking either that or like a chin break. He deserved that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That that would be that would be a cool move as well in that situation. Yeah. You do kind of like a, a pull up on the edge of the pit and then just like grab him and then just like fall down with his head just like bam. Yeah. Well, in any case. Brilliant. Yeah. Toast. All right. Un. un uh, <laughs> Unperturbed by uh, what just happened, the zombie moves forward. And he attacks. Let's see, and he should have two black dice. One skull. Still defend with four. Ching! No damage. Alright, back to you. Now remember, inside the pit, you're uh, at a disadvantage. So you can still attack him from there, but it would only be with three. 
Yeah, let, let, let's go for it. Let's let's uh, stay in the pit and we'll attack with a Warhammer. Skull. Ching. No damage. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, let's step out of the pit and we'll go one north. Landed on a perfectly safe square. Thank you. <laughs> Couldn't resist. <laughs> I'll end my turn there. I hear the sound of like a pencil breaking, snapping. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> no need. <laughs> okay. All right. My turn. Elite zombie moves forward to attack you. Missed. All right, your turn. Okay, let's turn this zombie into a pile of goo. All right. One skull. Hardly inspiring. That's all it takes. Got him. Zombie goo for days. Okay, um, right, I'm going to end my turn. All right. And a fresh turn begins. Search for traps. All right. This chest looks suspicious. Okay, so let's... Let's move two west. And um, am I able to use my toolkit and disarm whatever trap is in the chest? Yep, on your next turn, which begins now. Okay, so. Okay, so. Yeah, roll your one. Use the toolkit? Yep, roll your one combat die. Anything but. Well. If you get a skull, you spring it. Okay. It's disarmed. Alright, it was a poison needle. Okay. Right, so trap disarmed. Uh, okay, so uh, my turn is over. Yep. And your new turn begins. And let's search for treasure. Alright, inside the chest, you find 200 gold coins. Oh, but no golden book. Not yet. Uh, okay, 200 gold coins is better than a kick in the teeth, but I want the golden book yep. because I've been suffering in this quest. Okay, <laughs> so 200 gold coins. Great. Okay, let's let's do some movement then. Um, okay, so roll for movement. If you want to. Oh, sorry. Yeah, of course. I don't need to roll. For, I keep forgetting that. Yeah, I don't have to roll for movement. I tell people. Um, I okay, so they'll do it because rolling's fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going. To, I'm going to move out of the room, but I have to uh, try to jump the pit. So I'll try to jump over the pit. Okay. So roll anything but a skull. Yep. You fell back in. Clunk. Oh, boo. Ends your turn, down to four. But your next turn begins. You know, I've just realized what I should have done. I should have just lowered myself back into the pits carefully and then climbed out. Yeah, I don't think the game really has a mechanism for doing that. Um, 
but it would have been like, yeah, like an uncommon feat. So I guess you would have given yourself another chance to avoid falling in. Yeah, 50-50, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so, um, okay, so new turn? New turn. Okay, so let's go uh, out the door into the, and onto the other door. So one south. One east, one south, and we will open the door. All right. Opening the door to the central room. All right. And a strangely familiar sight greets your eyes. A zombie and a goblin but they're not alone it's also another goblin and his name is John C. well you know guys if you want to name a character in the quest you can actually uh catch that in too there's also a giant wolf but it's like and there's a goblin and his name is john cena <laughs> apparently so yes, uh, one of the goblins has uh, a really brightly colored uh, uh, golf shirt on, and he's got like these colorful armbands, and he's got like some jean shorts and some sneakers for some reason. And he had a baseball cap on backwards, but he like threw it into the into the crowd. All right, and there was let's see, a giant wolf and another giant wolf. here and so that's what you see oh no I almost forgot there is also a door here if that wasn't enough and I think that was uh, Jacer that I just saw hey Jacer Okay. So you're not joking, are you? That's what I actually see. Yep, that's what you see. Yikes. I mean, I'm going to die in there. So, um. Right, I'm going to roll my movement. And I need to subtract two. I mean, you've got uh, three healing potions left. And your heal body <clears throat> hasn't been used yet. But yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a big fight. Uh, okay, so I'm going to... Let's... Let's fire my crossbow. Um... Let's fire my crossbow at the zombie. Okay. Okay. I'm just checking to see. Okay. So, elite zombie, one skull. if he manages to block that. Cha ching No damage. Okay, I think I can move six. All right. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to do one of my three uses of my Elven Cloak of Passage. And I'm going to move two squares south through the wall. You're in front, front of the closed door now. Yes. Strategic. Okay. At the same time, though, you do reveal some things. 
So there's another door, or I mean door, there's another wall here. And there's a wall. There's a wall on the other end. Here. Oops, sorry, it's here. And there's a couple of goblins. Here and here. Okay, so you've used the cloak of passage okay. one time. All right, I'll just end my turn there. Okay. Two goblins. Although I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little bit concerned that the goblin and the zombie that went through the tunnel earlier have had some. Have had some training and open, now know how to open closed doors. So <laughs> I'm a little bit worried. Jacer says, "Sure, he might not die, but I could be a dwarf." Matreya says, "Oof, only one hero, eh?" <laughs> yeah, new heroes can join. So Jacer, uh, if you want to hop in there, you are most welcome. Got a dwarf waiting for you. Oh, please do. <laughs> please. Now, if you start, you're going to be starting at the iron door up here. Dice orders are up. Thanks, Ruby. Okay, yeah, so they're taking pre-orders on those Dread Veil dice that they reveal at PulseCon, $34.99, limit two, two packs per customer. You get six dice and a tin and a little faux leather scroll that turns into a play mat, just like the ones at Gen Con. I almost said just like Mother used to make, but <laughs> not quite. Okay, so Jacer is here. Welcome, Jacer. And he rolled a four. Hey, Jacer. Okay, so turn order. So we're adding a dwarf as the second hero. I guess just move them four spaces towards the elf. Okay. One, two, three, four. All right, and Jay, sir, uh, I can tell you quick what the dwarf, what the dwarf has. Uh. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't uh. I need new skills. Yeah. And I guess uh, he didn't bother shopping. <laughs> he just uh, heard his buddy was in trouble. Yep, he's good. Uh, he's got the... Uh... I mean, yeah. he still has two yeah. helmets and a buckler. <laughs> Dashed, but uh, I think he's alright. The yeah. Elven chain mail. The... Yep. Elixir of uh, Bracer yeah. helmet. Tower shield, stowed, battle axe. Okay, so I guess his only weapon is a battle axe. Yep. And so your two skills are Mighty Blow and Berserker Fury. Uh, 760 gold coins, you've got a potion of speed, a potion of airwalk, two magic resistance against all spell effects, a potion of warmth, fire resistance, two healing plus fours, two 1d6 healings, two antidotes. I was going to say the elf could use some of that stuff. Uh, let me just throw you up on screen here. Throw you up on screen, that doesn't sound good.
All right, dwarf had seven. Okay, any actions for your turn there, Jacer? Um, search for secret doors. Uh, they've already been searched in this uh, corridor. Uh, no, then uh, traps. Traps have already been searched as well. Uh, I'm good then. Okay. All right, monsters turn. Okay. I think for now, this this goblin is going to attack the elf. Just got to roll to see if these are elites or not. Oh, they're both elites. Wow. They're so small they can share one tile. Okay, so the first first goblin is going to attack. Skulls. Elf. You're defending with five. Ching. No damage. Okay, so he moves out of the way. The other one moves forward. He attacks. Two skulls again. Ching. Still no damage. Excellent. I think those other monsters are just going to stay put for now. All right, Elf. All right, okay, so let's make some goblin soup. <laughs> Coming right up. All right, are you still using your Warhammer? Yes. Oh, you already rolled. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Since the uh, since the uh, goblin still only rolls one for defense, I'm gonna just consider that a fatality. Hi. So you got him. Okay, and let's move to west. Like a sledgehammer against a hard-boiled egg. <clears throat> okay, I'm done. Alright. Well, he's definitely intimidated. Alright, dwarf. Even though it's not a promotional thing, I'm just going to go ahead and link in the chat if people are interested in pre-ordering that thing. I also want to say that um, Strange Bus is going to be doing a giveaway for Baldur's Gate 3 on his uh, Twitch stream, the Strange Bus, either today or tomorrow, maybe both days. So be sure to check him out too. He's streaming later in the evening. Yep. All right. Jacer? I got a three. Uh, I guess uh, I guess I'll cross that uh, red room there. Three spaces. Okay. Uh, um, let's do search for treasure. All right. And I just want to let you know the treasure cards are not used in this quest. I forgot to mention that before. Oh, oh that's right. All right. But you can still search for treasure. So uh, on the table is a note, and it says, all is not as it seems. That's all you found. All right. Okay. Monsters.
All right, I'm gonna send one of these giant wolves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Goes to the to the trap door. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Goblin pushes the giant wolf. And that goblin there is going to attack the elf. Two skulls. Ching, and a hit. So elf goes down to three. So welcome to Durf and Steve and Solar1927. Join Jordicon. Wardicon. I don't know why I called you that. Um, Elberg and Jacer Matreya. Okay. Elf's turn. Okay, so let's uh, use the Warhammer on the Goblin. I'm afraid you're going to say that. <laughs> yeah, not, not a lot he can do about that. Okay, I'll just end my turn there. Kind of sucks. <laughs> yep. I mean, you do have a potion of speed. Add two more dice, or is that six or five? No, that's dexterity. Which one's the potion of speed? Two more movement dice. Okay, it is two more dice. All right, let's do that. Potion of speed. Seven. All right, much better. So for a total of ten, respectable. Is that enough spaces to get me to the second door? Oh wait, hold on. I can see now. One, two, three. Yes, it is. Okay. Nine. Okay, can I... Yeah, have them run... Alright, so this 10th space, move them just south of that bottom goblin.
Alright, and take a swing at him. All right, two. All right, he's just an ordinary goblin. He dies an ordinary goblin death. Yep. He falls into the trap door. I try an uncommon feat to dive in the trap door. I know it still doesn't get me to really help the elf much. Unless it divides the other two monsters. Oh, there's three monsters over there. Either way. <laughs> oh, because normally you couldn't take the extra movement. Well, you can. No, and well, and you guys were covering the trap door, so I really couldn't get in it. Until after I, you know, I had to kill it. But now, like, the wolf can move on top of the trap door and... Or put half his body over the door, and then he, uh, it's still covered. Okay, so you're not uh, not attempting anything? I, well, I'd like to, if I could, attempt to dive into okay. the trap door and... Yeah, okay, so if you succeed, you're going to go through the trap door, but you're still going to have to roll, because it is a dangerous tunnel. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see if you take any... If you fail, you're just you just can't do it. You can't reach it. Can't do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a wolf there. That's why, like, it, it, it's tough. But if he's gonna try something daring, it might as well. All right. Roll your one combat die. Skull of success. <laughs> no success. Nope. All right. Bring on the monsters. Reach it. <laughs> okay. It's indeed. All right. So the giant wolf moves. One, two, and attacks with six dice. Five skulls. Ouch. You have five defense. Okay, so that five defense is because you got the helmet and the elven chainmail. Yeah, and I only blocked one. Alright. Oh. Um, it's a four damage. And a three. Nasty. Okay, other monsters. Let's see here. I kind of like uh, kind of like Glasgow's idea. So this goblin is gonna try to. Uh, no, I think the zombie's gonna. Okay, one, two, three, four. Yeah, the zombie is gonna try to pound on that door. See if he can open it. A villainous feat. He can get a skull, and he succeeds in opening the door. Oh, look at that. He pounded on the door so hard, it popped open. Alright, so this goblin is going to... Uh... Yeah, the goblin's gonna move forward. One, two, three, four, five, and attack.
one skull. Ching, no damage. Hey, Durf and Steve. He says, glad to see the stream up again. Oh, did it go down? Or do you mean because not being here last week? I was sick. Okay, I think um, that's all I'm going to do for now, monster-wise. All right, Glasgow. Okay. Um, can you remind me what my potion of vision does? So that would let you see any uh, normal traps and secret doors that are within your line of sight. And it lasts until you take damage. Okay, let's just uh, attack the goblin with the warhammer. Alright. Yeah. Tosty! Got him. Goblins go up pretty quick. And let's move. Yeah, let's go two east. Plow in. Alright, right into the doorway. Okay, I'll pass on to my distinguished colleague. The mighty dwarf. I guess we're going to start by swinging. Swings of the giant wolf. The one. I'm just gonna check. Giant wolf check, check. only defends with three. That's five body points. Ching! No damage. else yeah move one into the trap door roll your one combat dice Oh. I'm afraid he takes one damage, but he does pass through to the other side. Uh, that's it. All right, monster's turn. All right, the giant wolf is going to go into the trap door, pushing the dwarf. That would be really evil if I pushed him into the pit trap, but I'm just going to push him to the side. Okay. This other giant wolf can move to the door. One, two, three three and attack him through the doorway three skulls dwarf ching two hits Okay. 
And that's a killing blow. So dwarf, you're dead unless you are cashing in one of your uh, healings. It's like you got your choice. You've got warmth, uh, a couple of plus fours, a couple of d6s. Yeah, it looks like I got a one. Alright, so you're using the warmth? No, there's the potion of healing 1d6, and I rolled a one. Oh, I wasn't looking at the screen, sorry. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Alright, so we'll cross one of those off, and you are alive. Could use the warmth for one more, but it's totally your call. <clears throat> All right, um, let's see. The elite zombie is going to attack the elf. Two skulls. Ching, Glasgow takes no damage. He's encountered Steve before. He knows knows what to expect. It's like they train together. <laughs> All right, back to you, Glasgow. Okay, I'm going to give this zombie a bit more training. <laughs> Teach him a thing or two. Two skulls, okay. Ching! Ooh. Obi Wan has taught you well. Oh, gutted. Here's dead gamer. All right. Sorry, can you remind me? I think um, I think there's some there's something I'm I've forgotten. Um, I think I got a a battle skill card earlier, but I haven't made a note of it. Um, can you remind me what that is? Roundhouse. So roundhouse. What does that do? So the original card says any two-handed sword or axe. I'll go ahead and fudge that and say uh, uh, a warhammer would count. You can strike all adjacent enemies with a single attack. Roll your weapons normal combat dice okay. and apply the result to all enemies in adjacent squares. So like a little, okay, uh, that's useful to know. Tornado. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm just going to have to stay put for now, though. Chaser, the dwarf. Uh, let's attack the one in the doorway, I guess. Okay. Attacking with your battle axe. Uh, yes, I am. Ninjork, welcome. Cool stream. For one. Okay, one skull. No defense. To hit. Okay, so that wolf has taken one damage. He's got four left. And it makes it third turn. And in Jork, since you're brand new here watching us on Twitch, uh, you can use your gold coins in the chat if you want to affect the quest. Or if you're feeling brave and you want to join us in quest talk in the Discord, you can actually take control of a hero. We do have 
two heroes in play, but others could join if, if you're so inclined. All right, so was that all for your turn there, Jacer? Yeah, I, I can't move anywhere. Okay, fair enough. If anybody does want to join us in Discord, I'm just going to put the link in the chat. Oh, somebody just cashed something in. Oh. Check. Ah, oh, bonus treasure search. Oh, you know, I forgot about that. There is a bonus treasure search. The only thing is it doesn't do a whole lot in the, in these quests because uh, we're not using the treasure cards, but I'll just make a note of two bonus searches. For the future. Atreus says pretty. <laughs> okay, so my turn. See, I've got two giant wolves. So we're going to say the one to the right is going to attack first. Attacking the dwarf. Four skulls. Wrestling move. You do take one damage, though. So you're dead again. All right, so it's got to be the stunner, and I got to drink a potion instead of a beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which potion are you drinking? Um, I'll do the other D6. Because uh, I don't know how much it's going to spill on the mat. Yeah, there's just like, he dumps it all out and there's just a tiny bit of foam left that he, that he puts in his mouth. Huh. One. Dang. You're right. It was just a little bit of the suds. Yep. But lives to fight another day yep all right and the wolf took damage you kick the wolf in the gut and you uh, grab his head and just blam and he bounces he's got three left okay so the other giant wolf is gonna attack Four skulls. Alright, I'm uh, drinking a potion of warmth. Alright, because you're dead again. Okay. Yeah, because you can't go negative in Hero Quest. So burning through those potions but you're alive so I have you you just have two plus fours left and the elixir of life yeah magic resistance fire resistance air walk yep what's the berserker fury uh, that's where let's see you can trade any number of defense dice to roll any equal number of attack dice dice may be distributed amongst any creatures adjacent to you as you see fit. Okay, and what's the mighty blow? 
after rolling your combat dice, multiply by two the final die results and apply the result against your opponent. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Did I already attack with the zombie? No, just the two wolves. Say it doesn't look like I did. Okay. Zombie attacks the elf. Two skulls. Colored dice makes it easier to. Okay, so you deflected one, ching, and then one hit. Elf goes down to two. Tough quest. All right, heroes. Glasgow, you're up first. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna use my elven cloak of passage for a second time. I'm gonna go one north and one east, and between the zombie and the giant wolf. All right, whoosh. Passes through the wall. Twice. There you are. I'm really glad I gave that to you. <laughs> yeah, I am too. So, and now I'm going to use my roundhouse card. And I'm going to attack zombie and giant wolf with the warhammer. All right. Roll your dice. So, do I roll these separately or just one roll? One roll. But it gets applied to both cards. Oh, thank. Right, okay. Let's think happy thoughts. Is that your roll? That's my roll. So two skulls. Uh, let's okay. We'll apply it to the the giant wolf first. Ching, and he takes a hit. So three. So he's got two left. And I don't think it's going to go as well for the zombie. Let's find out. Ching, and a hit. Blech. Got him. It's like out on his shield. <laughs> or his uh, serving dish. It's pretty successful. Alright, so our roundhouse is used up. All right, I want to use the Berserker Fury. Okay, so Dwarf is using the Berserker Fury. So you can trade any number of defend dice for an equal number of attack dice. Wow. Yeah, all of them. Uh, eight. Right. Eight. Dang. <laughs> yeah, I like how it even shows the Dwarf on there. Just, yeah. Okay, so eight dice. Uh, and which, which of the two... Uh, Wolves, were you attacking with that? Oh, is it just one? Or is it any... Um... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you can distribute them amongst any creatures. So yeah, I guess I guess you can divide it up. I want to do five to the north wolf and three to the door wolf. Okay, three to the door wolf. Okay, you killed that one. All right, good. But I have no defense on my next turn. Yeah. All right, I'm, I got it. All right. Okay, so yeah, and then and then five, five for the other one. Ching ching, and then three hits. All right, not bad, not bad. All right, so now I'm gonna 
Oh, try to run. You better run. So that other one has two left. Fury Five. Oh man. I guess uh down the hall uh it doesn't even do much. I guess stand next uh go in to the south of the elf. That's it. That's it. I mean if I go down the hallway then you can block me in and I can die separate, so I'd rather stand next to the elf. I die he gets my shit. My turn? Yes, it is. One. I mean, he can, the, the wolf can As stand next to us and attack both of us because they can attack everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Two, three, four. Alright, and I can attack diagonally, so I'm going to attack the uh, dwarf there. Were you going to say something? Alright, no whammies. No whammies. Goals. Okay, well, instead of defending, I was chugging a potion. <laughs> Plus four. What? Okay, so you drank a plus four, so you would have taken three damage. Dead. Back to four. Yeah, it's pretty unusual that you don't get to defend at all. I, I thought about rolling eight dice to defend with one, just as the token defense, but I figured I had to roll more than nine to not get hurt, and maybe a little less because you had to go around the elf, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't high enough. I should have equipped the tower search shield. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can do that for your next turn. Well, no, I'm saying I would have gotten two oh, defense. To get even more. But then you would have had... Well, it would have only been, it, but No, I wouldn't have been able to attack with more because I can't do the shield and the axe. I'd have to unequip the axe and just equip the shield. And just stand there and be like, alright, but I only would have been able to roll two dice because I traded in all my armor... Uh, defense on the attack. Yeah. Yeah, switching to the tower shield meant that you would have had to put the axe away, meaning you're just attacking with your fists. One. Yeah, and right, and then like I said, I would have ended up trading all that extra armor for attack dice, and it would have only, it still wouldn't have been as much. Oh, we just had a cash in there. Did we? Why am I not seeing it? Dork says, die! <laughs> uh, okay, so back to heroes. How much for a gargoyle? Well, you can get the bonus monster and hope for one, but that's only if I'm deciding to... I usually don't bring in gargoyles like that. <clears throat> but... You never know. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, hit the giant wolf with the warhammer. Bonus potion. Okay, let me just cash that in. Go ahead and roll your attack. Oh, yeah! Hey, thanks, Ribby. Subscribe for 10 months. Magical aptitude. Yeah. 
All right, so who gets the magical aptitude? I guess there's only one hero that can use spell, so it should go to the elf. Yeah, that's that's really handy actually because I already used my potion of magical aptitude this quest, so that's really helpful to get a new one. Okay. Sounds Thank good. you. Yeah. Okay, so you rolled your attack. Uh, two skulls. Ching and a hit. All right, so the giant wolf has one left. <clears throat> yeah, and I'll I'll just stay put as well. Pass to the, the dwarf. All right, I'm going to move two spaces north. So I'm still standing next to the elf. And I'm going to try to attack him with the battle axe. One. A hit got him excellent can i just say when my elf eventually takes the ship to valinor i'd like to take the dwarf with me what an honor accepted <laughs> if we live through it You're facing the end of all things with a friend. I <laughs> that you could do. All right, so you've cleared the room of monsters. It was an heroic effort. All right, so that well, that was my uh, move and my attack. Okay. All right. Nothing for Zargon, so back to the heroes. Ninjork says, must be this tall to ride. And I said, shall I fetch you a box? Glasgow, what do you think? Okay, let's uh, search for treasure. All right. You find nothing. Okay. Uh, can we go? Can you, and we're instead we're looking for a book. Sorry, just for just for old times' sake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Excellent. Yes, uh, Jacer, since you weren't here for the uh, the reading of the will, I mean, the reading of the, uh, let's see. Uh, Quintrilia has decreed you are to traverse a dangerous maze of her own devising, etc., etc. Captured monsters within the maze, get their freedom if they kill you, etc., etc. You'll pass the test only if you find a golden book and leave the maze to tell of it. Okay. So that is the goal. Thus far, you have not found it. Okay, could I, could I drink my potion of vision, please? All right, potion of vision is now active until you take damage. So let's see. So looking throughout the entire room, you do not see any secret doors or traps, and I guess you're looking at this square as well. You don't see any, any there either. Okay, let's go one south and start walking down the corridor. All right, immediately you spot a secret door peeking out right there.
Okay, let's let's just keep going. Um, we'll go. Yeah, we'll go down to the secret door, but we won't open it. Okay, not yet. All right, and I'll go eight or nine spaces so that I'm next to the elf. Or no, I'll go. I'll go all the way past the elf since that base is safe. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep. Perfect. Uh, I know he already sees it, but I'll search for it because I don't see it. All right. You see a secret door. Alright, that's my turn. I feel a little silly that you doubted him. Um, does he have um, healing potions? Okay, so I've got I've got one potion of restoration, I've got one potion of superior restoration, and I've got one one D six. Okay. Alright, cool. I've also still got Heal Body. In fact, I, I was thinking of just casting Heal Body right now, actually. Uh, yeah, that may as well. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's what I'll do. I'll cast Heal Body okay, you're up on there. myself. All right. Now, your maximum is actually eight because of the Elven Bracers, but you're up to six, which is was your former maximum. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and I'll just maybe end my turn there and maybe wait till the next round. Okay, so you've used all your magic so far. All right, dwarf. Uh, I'm going to hand the elf one of these antidotes since I have two of them. Just in case we get a poison somewhere. Oh yeah, I should I should have mentioned that I do have uh, I do have an antidote. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Then I'm I'm good. I'll pass my turn too. So you uh, you take it out of your belt and you kind of like wave it at him and he <laughs> reaches into his pocket, showing you an identical vial. It's like all good, bro. <laughs> okay. Okay, right. so now that that romantic moment has passed, let's <laughs> open the door. The bromance. All right. <laughs> All right, the door creaks open. All right, immediately you see a door to the south. And a door to the east. Let's see what else you see here. Surprisingly, just a single Femir in the room. Okay, um, and does my potion of vision see traps and secret doors even when there's monsters present? Yes. But in this case, okay, great. So let's notice any. Okay, so let's let's go round the Femir. Um, so we're going one south, one. East, one south. Okay, and uh, we'll attack. Uh, sorry, I should really roll for movement to check I get at least three. Fair enough. Yeah, you're good. Okay, and then we'll attack with the Warhammer. Two skulls. Let's see, roll to see if he's an elite. He is not. Ching, and a hit. half damage ah Gons Grimm is here ok 
Okay, dwarf. Got a 10. So I'll go all the way around the Femir to the south and attack him with the Warhammer. No, the Battle Axe. <laughs> it's like you try to grab it away. Uh, okay. I, for I forgot. I already got my own weapon here. All right. Two skulls. Two. Got him. Excellent. Cut him down. Are you carrying a book? Nope. All right. My turn's over. Oh, I, I take it back. He did have a, a small uh, wrinkled pamphlet in his pocket that said to serve man. And you, uh, you leafed through it and you realized it was a cookbook. Yep. I crossed, I, I, I brushed off the dust and it said how to serve man. Yep. 101 delicious recipes. Hey, God's Grim. He says, hi, Hero Quest guys. Yep. Well, you can be one of those Hero Quest guys if you'd like. Certainly plenty of room. We got two heroes in play here of uh, Mage of the Mirror Quest 3. Torellia's Maze. Okay. Well, nothing for Zargon to do, so back to Glasgow. Okay, let's head east and open the door. Potion of Vision is still in effect. But for the moment, what you see is an orc, an ornate bookcase. Cashed in something there. John's Rim says, Oh, really? Y'all have inspired me to maybe set up a Hero Quest group climbing that mountain from the bottom. Hey, awesome. I love it. More games springing up. More the merrier, I say. So, Wardicon just gifted bonus equipment for the dwarf. Thank you, Wardicon. A great sword. Wow. Mighty two handed attacks. Oh, but it only may be used by the barbarian. That's not exactly fair. I mean, unless you just want it to sell. I'll give you a choice. Uh, Do you want it that or should we just draw another card for you? Uh, another card, because the Warhammer is a diagonal, right? Uh, or... No, it's just regular four. Uh, oh no, okay. I mean, it's nice, but... A flail. So that's two attack and diagonal. Okay. So you've got this thing can only be used by a cleric? May not be used. Or may be used, sorry. May be used. So, there's no problem with you using it. Yeah, I wrote these a long time okay. ago. Okay. Alright, cool. I'll take it. Right. Thank you. Now, if you get a bad roll with it, you might have purchased the, the flail of fail. But hopefully not. Okay, let's uh, let's go into the room and we'll attack the orc. All right. Yeah, and uh, there's, you don't see any traps or secret doors. 
And I feel a little bit sorry. I mean, this orc might just be the librarian here, but I am going to attack him nonetheless. Conan the librarian. All right, two mighty skulls. Let's just see if he's an elite or not. Nope. Nope. <laughs> All right, got him. Yeah, you know, orc librarians just don't get a lot of respect these days. But all right, at least I'm going to go stand on his uh, corpse over there. <laughs> like I was saying, it's like at least he at least he well, got to die in battle. Two, three. He got to die. Now I get to look at the elf eye to eye, and then start searching that bookshelf for a golden book. Uh, now I can see the top shelf and everything. Durf and Steve said, <laughs> "You're standing on his body." Durf and Steve says it would be cool to have multiple Zargons getting people through quests and then running giant games at end of season. Gonsgrim says, "I am. I'm not super active though. Part of too many Discord groups." Yeah. Treya says, "Yeah, it can be hard to track it all." Yep. Okay, so you're searching the room for treasure. <clears throat> All right, the golden book you've been looking for is in the bookcase. The book All right, I pass it to the elf. <laughs> the book tilts forward as you grasp it, causing the bookcase to move up. Okay, so apparently that was so well hidden, even the potion of vision couldn't see it. This reveals a secret door it was previously not seen. Well, I guess the furniture was blocking it, so now you can see it. Um, the room beyond this room... Well, we know there's a room. Okay, I guess you gotta, you gotta be able to open the door to actually see what's, what's beyond. Alright, well that was my movement getting in there and my action, so... The honor goes to the elf. All right. Hey, well, well, thank you very much for my golden book. Um, let's go ahead and take a look through the door. So, one east and open the secret door. All right. All right. In the room beyond, you see a weapons rack. And a sign above the weapon okay, rack then. says, choose one. Right, let's step inside, have a look. All right, so you approach the weapons rack, and you see that um, all of the equipment that's sold at the armory is available there. You can pick one, if you would like. Um, not sure. Dwarf, any, any thoughts? Anything you'd like? Uh, probably a crossbow. At least if I'm rolling slow, I can shoot with the crossbow and equip the tower shield and stand there and be a wall. Yeah, okay, so is there a crossbow on the weapons rack? There is. Like Great, Jeopardy. so let, let's let's there take it and I'll I'll throw it, I'll throw it back through to my <laughs> my colleague. Vanna is turning over the the glowing boxes. Okay. So you draw a crossbow and hand it to the dwarf. I mean, I'm pretty much set. I got a flail that can do diagonal. I got a battle axe for four dice and a crossbow for range. Excellent. Okay, now, um, I believe I remember 
I remember being told that we just have to head back to the Iron Door with the book, but curiosity is kind of getting the better of me, and I kind of want to check out the Blue Room to the south, if you're up for it. Sure. All right, so I think my turn is over. Yep. All right. Uh, I'm going to go stand by the uh, door to the south. I guess to the right. And uh, that's it for me. All right. The monsters, back to you, Glasgow. Yeah, to win, all you got to do is all right, so... leave with the book, but uh, the lure. Yeah. Further lose. Yeah, curiosity's got the better of me. Yeah, so let, let's head down to the door to the south. I guess you could officially uh, pass the crossbow over to me at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and... Um, well, can I end my turn there? Sure. Gonsgrim, uh, yes. To answer your question, so he's saying I absolutely love the physical nature of the board game pieces. You may all consider occasionally using tabletop simulator for ease of play. We have done that in the past. The only downside is if I remix the quest, it's kind of hard to do that in tabletop simulator. So for these, yeah, I'm still using physical. I like it because I can play as a hero too, which I don't get to do very often. So yeah, we have definitely done that and I would not be against doing that in the future. So Wardicon got a bonus monster. Okay, let's see. Okay, thank you. Gonsgrim says, that's entirely fair. Honestly, I like this way better. I was just curious if you've experimented. Yeah, we've used Tabletop Simulator. We've used um, the companion app before. Okay, heroes. What will you do? Or did you already tell me and I just wasn't paying attention? <laughs> Uh, well, he he moved to the, to the door, and then he was ending his turn, and then you said bonus monster. That's right. Okay. And then got my bonus monster. Does that come in immediately, or does it come in on your turn? Whenever I want. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. I reserve the right to uh. Oh, no problem. I, I didn't know if he was jumping out of a secret passage or a trap door or what was going on. I have done that before. Um, yeah. uh, Alright, then... Uh, I'll wait I'll wait my turn here and uh, allow him to open the door to the next one. He caught up. He just handed me... I'll inspect the crossbow. Fine craftsmanship. Gonsgrim says, that said, I'm a happy Zargon Morkar. Let's let's me practice my Gandalf Skeletor voice. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> oh, pass it to your uh pass it to you, Zargon. Alright. Nothing for me. <laughs> Glasgow. Let's see you. Okay, let's open the floor. All right, you open the door. Let's see what's here. Scanning the room, you don't see any uh, traps or secret doors. Do you see another door there?
All right, let's uh, let's go. Let's let's. let's... Oh, <laughs> yeah, almost almost let you off the hook there, but no, there's a couple of uh, couple of creatures that you got to fight. Of chaos mutants with the same stats as skeletons. Only got to roll for them. Ah, they're both elites. Okay. All right. Yeah, roll for your movement. Seven. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go one e one south, one east, and we'll attack with the warhammer. All right. I should put the uh, dice display back up. Sorry about that. Two skulls. Gonsgrim gifted one subscription. Hey! And it went to Ninjor. Awesome. Very generous of you. I always like it when people do that. That's cool. Gifting a subscription. Ching and a hit. Down he goes. Back to the pit of slime from which he arose. No problem. Keep tabletop gaming alive. Yes, indeed. So that was a tier one sub, so we're over our uh, goal of 14. We're at 16. That's pretty cool. Thanks. Thanks for the support. All right, dwarf. All right, I'm gonna equip the tower shield and the crossbow and take one step and set the tower shield in the doorway and use it as a barricade and fire over it with the crossbow. Okay. All right, so you should have seven defend dice, attacking with three. Oh, I missed. Missed. Did you also move one square into the room? Or to the doorway? Yeah, it was just the right. one square. Yeah. yeah, well, if I'm only rolling one dice, I might as well just move the one square. That's true. Yeah, 1d6 while using the tower shield. Okay. All right, my turn. All right, I'm gonna move to the side and move forward, attack the elf. One skull. Ching, no, def no damage. Ninja Orc says, do you have to activate that or is it automatic? Um, the subscription? I think it just automatically kicks in. Check your, um, check your profile on Twitch to see for sure. Gravendale Games says, hi all. Welcome. Welcome to HeroQuest fans live on Twitch. Not live on YouTube. 
as a newcomer, um, if you didn't know already, you can actually join us in uh, Discord if you want to take control of a hero in the quest talk. Otherwise, you can use your own coin. Oh, wow. Whoa. Oh, man. Wow. I was going to say, uh, hats off to Gravendale Games. Wow, that was incredibly generous of you. One, two, three, four, five subscriptions. Okay, was not expect this out of X. Sorry. Well, you paid for him. I mean, thanks. Okay, so you just gave. Let's see, Turbo Five, TF Fan Pool, seventy-three Xerxes, Solar Knights twenty-seven, Joe Kozier, and Gonsgrim all got subs thanks to you. Wow, amazing! Thank you. To set a new goal. I'm not sure what it, what it should be. That's pretty sweet. Hype train is close. Okay, I've never had one of those before. What is a hype train? Multiple people subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Something happens. Well, anyway, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what to say except thank you. Okay, where were we? Um, okay, so the monster roll... And his name is Joss! Yeah, I mean, easily deflected. Okay, so that's it for me. So back to uh, back to the elf. Overwhelmed okay, elf. trusty Warhammer. All right, let's go for it. Oh, wow. Yeah, not much you can do about that. You just got Warhammered. Mutant guts everywhere. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Alright, that's it for monsters. Okay, let's let's do a night move down towards the door. Carl Casey's back. Gravendale Games, my pleasure. Well, thank you so much. All right, are you opening the door? Uh, no, let's just wait for our, our friend. All right. All right, back to the friend. I'm going to move up next to... Uh, I guess to the north of the elf, and I, I guess I'll just do a search for treasure. That's what you find. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I figured, but had to check. Yep. Oh, threat card. Yes, thank you, Wardicon. Uh, threat card, threat card. Yes. <clears throat> thank you, Wardicon. Threat card for Zargon. Okay. Randomly pick a hero. Uh, that hero must discard one potion card at random. Trip over a loose stone and break one of your potions. Okay. So. Can I roll a D2? I guess that's just like rolling a coin. Okay, so it's the elf. Let's see how many potions you've got. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four. Two, three, four. Okay, so you lost the magical aptitude. It's like somebody got it for you and then somebody took it away. Uh. 
Okay, it's the hero's turn yet again. Okay, let's open the door. Right. Undeterred, you open the door to the red room. In the corner you see another ornate bookcase. A giant wolf. And that's it. Okay, roll for movement. Alright, let's go let's go four to the east. Alright, you're not seeing any uh, secret doors or traps. Okay, and we'll use our Warhammer on the giant wolf. Grim bought a sub that went to Gravendale Games. <laughs> so everybody's getting subbed. This is great. Alright, thanks for the support. It's probably like the most subs we've had like in ages. <laughs> Kong is super awesome. It's a community effort. Yeah, it is. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so you scored a hit on the giant wolf, uh, dwarf. Fire. Hey guys, I just want to acknowledge the time. Uh, it's like almost 5.30. Are you guys uh, okay playing for a bit? bit longer or uh what, what do you think i mean i'm cool if you are i mean i can probably i can maybe do it i can do another half an hour sounds good cool yeah <laughs> never stop never stopping says turf and steve <laughs> well i mean uh i guess i'm getting on the hot streak here but i don't want people to run out of money either <laughs> so all right, um, I'll take a step south and fire at the uh, giant wolf. All right. And I crank back the crossbow a little extra and use mighty blow. Uh, let's see. Or is that something that has to be declared after an attack or is it melee only? After rolling your combat dice, multiply two by the final die result. See, some people quibble about this, but I would just say, like, how would you enhance a uh, ranged attack? Well, maybe you hit, you know, a vital area, or, you know, you just have a little bit better. Right, area. well, that's why I said even even crank it back a little further, you know. Sure. It doesn't all, I'm not saying it would always work on a thing. It's not like trying to overdraw on a bow, but... But yeah, I don't know, he's a dwarf. <laughs> Got a tempered uh, head on the on that particular bolt. Well, I mean, it could, this potentially could be the last monster. It, it's not like I could save a uh, skill. Yeah. Limit 
bow range. Um, yeah, you can. I'll let you do it. All right. No special thing required. Oh, I missed anyway. Oh, too bad. If you multiply nothing by nothing. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure because of the way the spells or the skill is. Like, if I should have waited to roll it to then double it because it says like at the end. Yeah. So it's kind of questionable when to use it. So like that could have been a waste, and that's why it's written that way. But I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, the way I choose to interpret it, yeah, you you missed. I mean, that that bolt just like went all the way into the wall, like. Yeah, or it could have just splintered from the force and just, you know, shot shards everywhere and done nothing. Bonus monster. Well, thanks. There you go. Bonus monster. All right, he doesn't want you to be lonely. That was my move and my mighty... Disastrous shot. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thanks, Wardicon. All right, my turn. Yes. All right, this bookcase just explodes, just like pieces of wood and books go flying everywhere. And an orc and a Femir emerge. Okay. And this giant wolf is gonna attack the elf. Five skulls. Holy smokes. Ch -ch Ching. Take two hits. Down to four, but you do get a wrestling move. Let's do a sharpshooter on that wolf. <laughs> All right. So you get on his back and you're uh, cinching the tension there and he's like ah, ah, ah. I guess he'd be it'd be his back legs wouldn't it and you're like bending back straining ah. Ah. all right he takes damage Yeah, nice defend roll. I agree. Okay. So I guess that monster uh, learned his lesson. Maybe he didn't. Alright, heroes. Okay. Um, the wolf has still three body points, is that right? Yeah, I'd say whack him and try to run behind me. Do you have a diagonal attack, like, in, for the next round? Or something that can do diagonal? Well, I've got a long sword, but I'm currently wielding the Warhammer. Well, right, well, if you can whack him now, and then later switch to the long sword. If you get behind me or to the side of me, and then you can attack through the doorway. Yeah. After you attack the uh, wolf. If you get more than four on your movement. Okay, yeah, okay, so let, let's do let's do that. Let's do Warhammer attack on the wolf. Alright. Three skulls.
three hits. Oh. Got him. Awesome. Slain the beast. Okay. Um, right. I think we'll just stay put in that case. Um, let's. Well, what I'll do is I'll move one east. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> got him. Got him. <laughs> got him. All right, dwarf. It's the orc. I can probably see him. Um. Yes. Uh. Hold on, I lost my speed. Oh, two. Okay, two skulls. Ching and a hit. Nice. Got him. And um, I'll take one step in the doorway. Yep, it's 3D printed, based on the old uh, Warhammer Fantasy one, loosely based. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, one step, which direction? Into the door, into the red room. One step in the door, and I'll turn towards the uh, Famir. Even though I actually prefer the uh, classic Hero Quest Famir, I think that design has never been never been matched. I, I do like the way these guys look as well. They take up a lot of room, though. Yeah, I would I would like to have one as like the boss Famir, you know, like the big guy. I have him like surrounded with two of the little ones. Even though they're not that little, like one next to, because like he's pointing forward and back, and like the other ones were more wide, so having like two of them standing next to one of them, I think would look pretty cool. Yeah, with all the classic monsters, they had in mind the fact that they want to take up as little room on a square as possible, except for the gargoyle. The gargoyle was the only one where it was like, who cares? Yeah, well, I mean they did try to have the wings up high. Mm -hmm. Which helped like to get it over like a treasure chest or the throne, but it pretty much got in the way of everything else. Yeah, although you could you could pop the wings off if you wanted to. Now with the new redesign, they absolutely did not care with these guys. I mean, they just take up an insane amount. Yeah, of room. I mean, right, and then like said, overhead, it... you know, maybe with his claw like in front. Yeah. Well, I think that's what made the other one so cool is because they had the tail wrap up and around so it stayed tight. They had the arms up high. So it took up, it looked like it took up a lot of room, but it fit over top of almost everything else. Yeah. The only thing it would hit sometimes would be like a, the Chaos Warrior's axe or the gargoyle. Yeah. And even though these guys take up a lot of room, like the new design... Like they're kind of like rearing up a little bit more, so it's not quite as as crazy. Yeah, it's it, it, they used the uh, the vertical space more efficiently. Yeah. Matreya says, "Yeah, I love the extra well, space on the yeah, one and a half tile." I pref I actually prefer the the mythic tier abomination because although it's big, it's it's a bit a little bit less awkward to place on the board. Oh, the uh, the alternate. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't have him handy. Yeah. But yeah, he's got like the two hands that are out instead of the huge yeah. spike going back. Good, good call. Yeah, they're a, li they're a little bit easier to place. Yeah. I don't think I've, I've really used those in a game. I should dig those out. Good call. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. 
conscious of the time here. Uh, back to the game. Um, where were we? Okay, yeah. Uh, your, it was your turn. turn. My turn. Okay. You're both about the same strength. Well, no, the dwarf's a little stronger with defense. Let's go for the elf. Yeah, these squares are only one inch by one inch. It's a reprinted board. Three skulls. Oofed. Ching and one hit. Down to three. All right, back to you, Glasgow. All right, so let's use my trusty Warhammer again. As you do. One skull. Ching! No damage. Rubbish. <laughs> Dwarf. Okay, we'll just stay put. Oh, yeah. Forgot about your movement. Yep. yep. Okay. Chaser. All right. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna keep trying to shoot from there. Yes. One. Nothing. It's a hit. All right. And just noting that both of the dwarfs' uh, skills have been used up. Yes. Just acknowledging that. Just acknowledging that. Okay, my turn. Okay, my turn. Yes. Mm. And attack the elf again. Two skulls. and a hit. Okay, Glasgow, you're down to two. I'm not going to move, so go for it. Two skulls. Got him. Slain the Femir. And I wonder, um, amongst all the debris on the floor of this room, if there's anything to be found. I mean, on your next turn, you could search if you wanted. Okay, well, I'll end my turn there and pass over to the dwarf. Uh, do the search for treasure. All right. Among the debris of the uh, bookcase, you find a potion of healing. It restores up to four lost body points. So now you've got three of those. No, I only have uh, two. Oh, did I forget to... I used one. Cross That's how I'm at four body points. That's right. Okay, so you have two total. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Alright, but there's no other golden books or anything? Nope. Okay. I'm really curious about that note from earlier. I said, all is not as it seems. 
Um, I wonder if that was referring to this bookcase that exploded. Well, you'll notice there were special things about both of those bookcases. <laughs> so, could be. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, so there's no other secret doors or any or traps. Right. So the elf would be able to see them if they were normal traps or secret doors. Well, he would have before this encounter. True. Yep. Um, but just to be sure that there was nothing. Oh no, he would have seen it after it exploded. Okay, never mind. And that wouldn't go anywhere because that would lead back to the other room with the other bookshelf. Ah. All right. Healing potion for the elf was just redeemed. Thank you. And I actually, I don't think I decided whether it was a 1d6 or a plus 4, but since the plus 4 is so useful, I'm just going to say it's a plus 4. If that's cool with you. Wonderful. Thank you. Alright, so after searching, um... I'm going to stow away my tower shield. Uh, does the elf have a shield? I do. Okay. Alright. All right, um, so back to five defense. Alright, and, and I'm going to equip the battle axe. Okay. And, and I guess move 12... Do we have to find another way out? Or is it in and out the same door? Same door, I think. Same door, yep. Okay. Uh, I'll move 12 towards that door. Or, why did I take you that direction? Mordecai just redeemed another treasure search. That's cool, but it, it does say 1d6 when you redeem it. Oh, I did. Oh. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Ferg. Uh, yeah, that was a really new one I, I added to. Well, I should honor my original commitment, so... Which hero should get a 1d6 healing potion? Okay. All right, sorry, um, yeah. So Glasgow, we'll just say that's a 1d6, like you pointed out, that's my mistake. So we've got a healing 1d6. Now, I, so, so the plus four portion of healing we spoke about recently, that's actually a 1d6? No, that's still a plus four. Well, that's still a plus four. So now I've got another one D. I've already got a potion of rejuvenation plus one D six. Yeah. So you've got two total one D sixes. Oh, this day's getting better. <laughs> I know. What am I saying? You've got three. I've got three. I don't yeah. think I've got three. Well, the rejuvenation is the same. So you had two one D sixes. I didn't cross it off. I didn't think you'd used it. Because he just bought you one. So you've got two of those and one of those. So total three. Am I wrong? Okay, yeah. So I've got, I've, got, uh, I've, got, I've got two rejuvenation, one D6, and I've got one plus four potion of healing. Um, no, you don't have any plus fours. You have two one D6 healing and one rejuvenation, one D6. I thought like two minutes ago there was a plus four potion of healing added to me. Yeah, but I gave it to the dwarf. Oh, I see. Okay, no, that's fine. I'm happy enough with that. That's fine. <laughs> okay. I mean, you guys can always swap them when you're nearby. Yeah, if I do my puppy dog eyes, the dwarf would always give it to me anyway. Yeah. Aw, oh, shucks. <laughs> Loving the new monster buys. Well, thank you. Yeah, I just need to pay. I drank two of them and attention. rolled one each time. Yep. Yeah, the bonus treasure searches will come in handy in the next quest. 
because again we're not actually using the uh, the treasure deck so I mean when you search it's it's already a safe search if there's no you know trapped furniture so it's just gonna be either you find what's what's there in the note or you just find nothing but just in this quest but don't worry those rewards will not be wasted they will appear in the next quest okay <clears throat> nothing for me to do so back to the elf okay I'll do 12 and follow the dwarf Dwarf. Gotcha. Durf and Steve says they don't need treasure. They need to die. <laughs> Somebody's on the side of chaos. Um... Uh, my, I'm heading back to the trap door, right? I think to get uh out of this piece. Yeah. Okay. That would take uh, you in this direction. All right, twelve towards the trap door. Eleven. Roll one. Shield. Okay, so no damage. Excellent. Alright, back to you, Glasgow. Okay, uh, let's uh, go three north and as far east as we can, heading towards the door. Okay. Dwarf. Go out that door into the corridor and then uh, west. Oh, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then put me on the uh, the secret door tile. Yeah, and I'll wait, because he still has to come through the tunnel. Or the trap door. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, that's good. I'll, I'll wait there. Right, Glasgow? Okay, so let's head for the trap door. Two, three, four. Alright, roll your 1d6. I mean your uh, one combat die, I should say. A skull. Unfortunately, you took one damage. Oh, limping home. Now remember, your body points do get restored between quests. Atreus says, feel like you need some sound bites from the I'm Here to Kill Chaos Final Fantasy spoof video. Oh, I don't think I've seen that one. Yes. All right, I'll uh, move four spaces to the to the west here, and I'll that, wait right there. At one time, I was using the sound alerts board very liberally. I mean, I had a sound effect or a sound clip or a musical little thing after just about everything. But after a while, I was just like, ah, this is getting too cartoony, a little too annoying. So I kind of cut back on, on that. But that is a good idea. Okay. Elf. Home stretch. Okay. One, e one east, five north. 
and five west. All right, dwarf. So good. Uh, I'll, I'll move uh, three spaces north and one space west and stand in front of the the uh, iron door. Uh, but not, and I'll hold it open for the for the elf. What a gentleman. I, I know he's limping in, but I don't want to be the one that, that attempts to try to help him, because that's not what you would do. Make it back on his own, if you can. <laughs> don't want to injure anybody's pride. Who's, who says chivalry is dead? <laughs> Alright, Glasgow. Okay, two west and three north. All right, out the door. The golden book in hand. Dwarf. All right, I'll uh, exit the quest and close the door. All Mission right. accomplished. Quest completed. Success. All right. <clears throat> Pass the test. All right, one second here. All right, so you uh, you confront Queen Torelia. You're a little annoyed at what you had to do, but you hand over the golden book, and you've earned her respect. And she's commissioned you to go on the next quest for the Elven Kingdom. And I'll go ahead and read you the text of the next quest. The Elven Prospector. Quest 4. Your companions now may join you as you begin the first part of your mission to rescue Melandriel, the princess. The queen wants you to free the royal prospector who has been imprisoned inside an old mine by Zargon's minions. Only this prospector can identify moon silver, also known as lunarium, a magical substance that is critical to rescuing the princess. You must enter the mine through the iron door find the prospector, and then leave through the wooden exit door with the prospector. And that'll be next week's quest. Congratulations. Well played, guys, says Gravendahl. Matreya says, picture Duke Nukem going off about chaos for three minutes. Shake him, baby. Great game, fellas, says Wardicon. Good game, says Zilver. Good game, Matreya. Yeah, good game, guys. And there's definitely some cash-ins for next time. Any uh, closing closing thoughts? Uh, can I sell the two helmets I'm carrying? Oh yeah, you want to do a little do a little shopping? Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it helps clean it up a little bit, and it. If they sell back for half price and I got two of them, then that's 125 gold. Yep. yep. Okay. So.
So 885 for the dwarf. Get rid of those two helmets. Anything else? Um, I'm, I don't really think so. Like, I think he's pretty set up for not, you know, without a problem. Um, I'm just going to double check and see if there's any extra notes here. We did pretty good on time. I was thinking, yeah, finish at six, and we did. I got a question. Does the tower shield, if I give that to the knight, would he have, would his movement buff override the tower shield penalty? Interesting. I hadn't really considered that. Let me think about it. That's a pretty powerful buff, but I mean, what, it definitely works with armor. Right. I'm more inclined to say maybe it, it still has a movement penalty, but not as much. Maybe he is good with those types of shields. Yeah, let me think about it. Tower shield. I mean, it's not bad, but it's a, it's a big drawback, and I I can use the buckler, and he would still roll six dice, and then if they missed, I'd get a counter attack. So, kind of more inclined to have the uh, dwarf use his buckler here than the tower shield. But I don't. I mean, it's good. It seems like it could be useful in a doorway situation, but I was just trying to think on what else. It, you know, who would benefit better, and since the uh, Knight always has to use a shield for his uh, abilities. I mean, he would be probably benefit from it better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll take. I'll uh, re-examine it in the time in between. So tomorrow. Uh, for those of you who are going to check us out on Twitch at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be playing Rise of the Dread Moon. Continuing. I think we're still in Nightfall. We haven't quite finished it yet. That was a crazy quest. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a difficult quest. I mean... We may have earned her respect, but she has not earned my respect. <laughs> I think she's one messed up elf lady. <laughs> I've always thought that about this, the way this uh, these uh, play out. It definitely is. I'll keep those thoughts to myself, though I won't say anything to her. Yeah. In the interest of PR. Yep. Yeah, well, deployment. the whole, like, hey, the monsters can go free if they kill you, or whatever is a little bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm just going to set these uh, wild or uh, giant wolves out to, what, pasture and eat baby elves or whatever they're going to do out there? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I mean, if nothing else, if nothing else, Miss uh, Mrs. Um, messed up elf. What was what's with what's with the pit, what's with the pet trap on the other side of the door? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, you could reason maybe the monsters set it up, but yeah, it's like wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you want your little princess rescued or not? You know. <laughs> yep. For sure. I guess to be fair, if we're defeated by one pit trap, we probably weren't the ones to send in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Fair point. Yeah. It's like something in the system, you know, they, uh, 
you know, they, they got all these extra jobs to boost the economy building these, you know, these death traps, but <laughs> at what cost? Yeah. Alright guys, well, thanks for the game. Uh, it's unusual that we finish a single quest in a single session, but it's, it's always satisfying when we do. Love it when a plan comes together. And we could see if there's anybody we could raid this time of day. I wonder if Strange Bus has got his stream yet. Uh, we can always check him out. Let's see. No, he's not streaming yet. I see there's 46 in one. And then there's El Funko. So 46 is doing Cyberpunk, and El Funko is doing Escape from Tarkov. Durf and Steve says, Verg, we should join forces to spread chaos. Vorticon says, get the potion from the shady shopkeeper. Uh, Gravendale Game says, my closing thought, bookshelves randomly blowing up is making me rethink my office layout. <laughs> Matreya says, TF, la 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 la. Elverk says, now quick, everyone buy monsters spawn right there in the queen's room. <laughs> hey, what about my promised freedom? Oh. Yeah, it's between... uh, Actually, I'd like to buy a potion of battle. That's the reroll, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, All right. Push, push into battle. Let me just check the price on that, unless you've got it handy. Uh, I'm not sure. It's either a hundred or two hundred. Battle two hundred. Okay, that's a, what I was thinking. Okay, so you're down to six six or sorry six eighty five. We've got a potion of battle. All right, guys, we're going to end the stream. Thank you for playing, and we will try to raid one of these people. Do you guys have a preference? 46 and 2 playing Cyberpunk or El Funko doing Escape from Tarkov? Uh, either either one. Uh, what, whichever one has the least amount of viewers. Oh, Help yeah. them out. Funko has only got one right now, so we could we could do him. So Watercon says you need to redeem the bonus potion as well. I'm not seeing the bonus potion. Okay, let me check my uh, queue. I don't see the bonus potion. I see uh, a bonus treasure search. You guys know what he's talking about? For next time. Uh, redeem bonus potion for hero. It was... No, no, right before, good. get the potion from the shady shopkeeper. Oh, oh, okay. He wants it to be from the shady shopkeeper. Okay, so in other words, there's a 50% chance of it failing. That's interesting. Okay, I hadn't, hadn't thought of that. Okay, thank you guys. I oh, appreciate that. Well, that's an interesting thought. Okay. So, a potion of magic resistance that has a 50% chance of failure. Okay. As you wish. Uh, I got two regular ones, so definitely give it to the uh, elf or have somebody pass it on to the alchemist so he can tinker with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the elf already has two potion of magic resistance, so um, there might be a better use for it. Yeah, well, this is the this is the type that resists all spell effects, but it might fail and not do anything. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll notate it there with a star for whoever decides. Okay, all right, we'll stop the stream. Thanks again, guys, and we'll go ahead and raid El Funko. Yeah, I say give it to the alchemist. For next time? Okay. Yep. 
Don't worry, I'll warn him. <laughs> Alright, good game.